after that. Change of zone map and site plan 1426, applicant Patrick Johnson, location 957 East Main Street. Proposal change zone map to AM overlay, currently LB local business. Adult use cannabis retail establishment. Time of the hearing immediately following close of the first public hearing, which was to begin at 7 p.m. PM. Uh, copies of the above mentioned proposals are on file in the land use office, City Hall, and according to Street, Tony, Connecticut. Greg Mealy, Chairman, Planning and Zoning Commission, dated in Tonington, Connecticut, the second day of November, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Personal. Is the applicant in attendance? Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Patrick Johnson, uh, 29 Half Bay Road in Hostel, Massachusetts. Okay. Was the sign posted for the time allotted in our uh, regulations? Yes, sir. And were the green cards sent out? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So we have my phone. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Good evening. For the record, Galen Semperban, a licensed professional engineer in the state of Connecticut, uh, working for East West Engineering as a senior project manager here with the applicant. Uh, basically, uh, the site itself was located at 957 East Main Street. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's presently being used as a a bus garage. There's a building that was built around 1964, and the majority of the site, or pretty much the entire site, is presently paved around the building. Uh, the building itself is 36 by 90 feet, single story building. Uh, the project or the site itself actually consists of three parcels. Uh, there's two parcels that are part, part of, of the 950 70s Main Street and then a portion of a third parcel at 92 Yorkshire has a paid pavement on it uh, presently as part of the parking lot for the, for the site. Uh, we are requesting a zone change and a site plan approval. Uh, the zone change would be to, to apply uh, the, the overlay zone. Um, well, the site itself is zoned LB, limited, business and we're looking to to uh, put in the uh the overlay am zone uh, the alternate incarceration comma medical marijuana dispensary zone as an overlay zone on the two parcels that comprise 957 east main street and then a portion of the property uh for 92 yorkshire we are creating an easement on the 92 Yorkshire. It's all three parcels are presently under the same ownership. Uh, so we are creating an easement on the 92 Yorkshire property to allow the continuation of the pavement uh, that's presently there. The uh, part of the zone change, uh, we did prepare a, a narrative that did discuss how the zone uh, the, the use corresponds with your plan of conservation and development. In particular, uh, the, 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 we are in a, a commercials, commercial uh, strip corridor uh, in that area. We are looking to, to redevelop an existing uh, use that's, that's uh, uh, you have seen the use that uh, certainly could use some, the, the site could use some uh, dressing up. Um, so I, I won't go into details on the uh, on the narrative unless you have some specific questions uh, in regards to to the narrative. I would like to talk. Oh, there's a couple of minor things in the narrative I would like to to, to point out. Uh, we did talk about, amongst other things, uh, uh, the hours of operation. Uh, we'd be looking for hours of operation to be from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. Um, and then we did talk also in the narrative 
uh, about the amount of traffic we expect or number of customers we expect at the facility. <coughs> Looking at approximately 250 customers a day, and that's based on past experience uh, that, that our client or, or the applicant has with the similar facilities in, in similar locations. As part of the site itself, we are looking to make a number of improvements on the site. Uh, basically, uh, the site would continue to have 23 uh, parking spaces and one handicap space. Uh, we are looking to create a dumpster pad and generator enclosure, uh, basically for to enclose both the dumpster and the generator. Um, we are looking to remove uh, some landscape or some pavement. Uh, presently, the site is paved on the back side along Yorkshire. It's paved right up to the road, and the curb cut extends basically a full width of the property. So we are looking to close that that up to a a normal driveway width and put in some landscaping trees uh, and shrubs. We are also looking to create a shrubbery border between the site and 92 Yorkshire, the existing house, uh, even though it's owned by the same uh, owner. Well, this is for certainly for the future, should uh, you know that house be sold, or um, you know, also obviously to augment the, the, the livability in the house to provide some more break between the two uses along the East Main Street, we are looking also to remove pavement. Presently, the pavement extends from the front of the building out to the, the curb line, and we're looking to remove pavement and put in uh, a landscape tree and shrubbery in that area also uh, to, to dress up the site and make it more presentable. Um, let's see. Uh, the town staff has had a number of comments on, on the project that we've uh, worked to address. Uh, they had some concerns with the drainage, how it worked out onto uh, presently the site basically drains towards Yorkshire and, and out onto the street. Uh, so we are proposing to put in a catch basin within our parking lot uh, along the back curb line. Uh, and then pipe it into the town system so that the water will no longer run onto the street. As part of uh, proposed improvements, we are also looking to make the, inch, the access on the Yorkshire one direction, uh, putting a do not enter signs. And you can see this kind of a angle to the curb line uh, to, to, so that anybody Yorkshire would be used only as an exit from the site uh, so that vehicles could access the, the traffic signal on East Main Street. Uh, East Main Street is in a busy road through that location. So at some periods of the day, it would be difficult to take a left out of the site. Um, based on the location of the site, if you take a right out of the site, you're coming back down East Main Street towards Route 8 and towards the center of the town. So we expect the majority of the traffic to actually be taking the right out on East Main Street from the site. But for those vehicles that would be heading uh, left out on East Main Street, uh, would they have the option of either waiting for a break in the traffic or exiting the rear driveway and entering via the traffic signal at, at the next intersection. Um, like I said, we've, we've worked to address uh, the, the town comments. Um, uh, we've worked through the, the majority of the engineering uh, comments, I believe, and, and planning comments uh, from the point of view of, of the development of the site. Uh, there are some outstanding comments, but the, but most of those have would be addressed 
after this commission acts, such as the WPCA, where we need to, to obtain a, a, a sewer discharge permit, uh, we would need to reapproach the DOT. Uh, we are showing improvements along East Main Street, including the sidewalk uh, that would be inconsistent with the previous we approved DOT improvements along East Main Street. Uh, However, because we're realigning our driveway slightly, you can see we're sweeping the traffic away from the front of the building a little bit, that uh, the, the staff has, has recommended or concluded we should go back to the DOT just to approve that little piece. But the other improvements are the, the width of the sidewalk, the, the location of the sidewalks in, in the same location as the previously approved DOT. In, uh, improvements for East Main Street. So they would couple up with the, the improvements being done by the, by the city. Uh, we also will uh, obviously address the building department's comments as part of a building and if any building permits necessary, permits necessary with the building department. Um, that's kind of a, a brief, uh, presentation. I'd certainly be happy to go into any more detail, or if you have any questions on anything in particular that you'd like me to discuss in more detail. And then touch upon the uh, the easement component hmm? again. The easement that you're talking about. You're saying there's multiple parcels. Yeah. Um. It's this property is a property line through here so this is one parcel there's a property line presently going right through here so this is a second parcel and then this is the 92 yorkshire parcel so these two parcels are known as 957 main street and 92 yorkshire uh, the present pavement follows the existing pavement line and comes out to the to the property along here so we'd be looking to remove a little bit of pavement but create an easement right down here uh, to allow this pavement to remain um, where's east main street on that east main street is here so you're putting in new sidewalk hmm? you're putting in new sidewalk yes on east main street we'd be looking to put a sidewalk in and this is the same location as the, the town's uh, plans uh, for the uh, the city's plans for the uh, improvements along East Main Street, uh, removing the pavement between there, between here and 10 feet into the property and putting in landscaping <clears throat> and greenery here and here, and then realigning our driveway. So the, the entrance and exit that you're showing there is been, there's going to be a delineation between the way in and the way out. Yes, there's a stop bar, and then we brought a center line into the property, a pavement center line to, to direct the vehicles coming in and coming out. So it's, did you, it's two did you direction. Ever, did you consider a no left hand turn? Hmm? Did you consider a no left hand turn coming out of East Main and force all the traffic to the signal? Um, I mean, we hadn't, we hadn't discussed that, the, the staff hadn't discussed it. Um, so we figured we'd give them the option that during low period times, uh, vehicles could take the left during periods when traffic is more prohibitive, they would go out Yorkshire. And as part of this, you can see we were forcing them to go to take a right out to Yorkshire with a sign here directing them to the signal. No, I think that's a good idea. It's just that when you're making a left-hand turn, you're obviously crossing it. Uh, a line of traffic, and uh, you're also trying to blend into two two line lanes of traffic coming up. And generally, that's about a 50 mile an hour pace. I mean, there is a speed limit, but that's pretty much what you see. So uh, I will I will say we did have that same conversation with Sergeant Baldus, and and there was some concern. That there's definitely some concern there, but the trying to at least encourage traffic to use Yorkshire Street and and go to the light but they didn't want to just make it right turn only onto East Main. Okay, so back to the, I'm still confused, I apologize. 
the, the property, there's two separate pieces front and back. Yeah. Right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this piece. So part of the building is in the other parcel? Yes. No? These two parcels, the building extends over that property line present. So why aren't you just combining those pieces? That's one of the conditions of approval is for us to combine these two parcels. So you wouldn't need the easement. Hmm? You wouldn't need the easement for that component, correct? Uh, if the, the easement would be, this would still be the property line for 92 Yorkshire, but we have the easement for the use of this pavement for these 957. It's actually three parcels right now. So only two of them would be combined. Mm -hmm. the, the top seven, top right seven parking spots would be part of the easement of the Yorkshire. One, and this one would be combined. And Jeremy, that easement would go with the land records? Yes, it would. And that's that's a condition of approval that they combine the two, two of the parcels and record that comp, that lot combination and record the easement to, to that York, uh, what is it, 92 Yorkshire Street? Record, record that easement as well. It's not a land record, correct? Correct. So the 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 only reason why I mean not the only reason but the that the fact that makes that a little more acceptable is there's already pavement there, so they're they're essentially improving and reusing, you know, a, a pre-existing condition. But I I think it was important for us to get an actual legal easement for that you know on file for that parcel. What's the pervious surface uh, looking like on that site? Because it looks like it's all paved. Yep. Yes, right now it is all paved, and we're going to be introducing, as you can see, the green and kind of both sides of, of on Georgia Street and on East Main. At present, at present, the impervious area the ratio is 0 0.912. We're reducing it to, to 0.816. So we're we're basically making it or decreasing the, the existing nonconformity of it. Any commissioners have any other comments? Uh, yeah. Um, the Rosses own the property now. I guess the three parcels. Are you buying the property or are you doing the land lease? We're doing it. We're releasing it. You're releasing it. Yep. Okay. So the Rosses are going to go through the process of putting all three parcels together. Yes. And doing all that. Yeah. Those are conversations we've started already. Okay. Um, the parking spaces that are in the easement. Um, can the what's it ninety two or whatever Yorkshire that house there? Mm -hmm. Can they use those parking spaces for if they rent that house out? Can those people use those parking? Spaces? Two of those parking spots. Just parking. two of them. Two of them. Yes. And will those be monitored? On which two? It, it, it was not going to be designated, but they have access to it. And that's something we, we will work it's not. Is it, is it because you need those parking spaces for the amount of people that are coming to your facility? We would prefer to have those spots. They don't need them right now, but this is for, for future. It is worth noting too that as of today, we worked with the former Hertz parking lot, 200 feet, uh, feet down the road. And we're going to be picking, picking up eight parking spots there to our employees. Uh, going out to Yorkshire, is that a residential road? Is that what that is? So we're taking commercial traffic and throwing it onto a residential road? Not yeah, much, actually. If you're, not, you're forcing it up to the, to the signal, which is. Well, uh, well, the question is we are doing that, whether it's one car or 20 cars. Well, it's there now. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying. Just, so you're saying you're having the employees park in a different lot? That is the plan. Uh, some of them, not all of them. And how are they shuttling up to the facility? It's it's 250 feet. Oh, okay. the side. Yeah, so it's it's very it's three I think three buildings down. My only concern with entities like that, you know, coming out of the gate, it sounds like you don't have no parking for your facility. You know, we've run into this in the past where you know, people are going to get shuttled from point A to point B to get to work and so forth. So. <coughs> now, do you have an agreement with this other place to have their? Yeah, we signed it today, seven year agreement. Seven year agreement. Yeah. So, what happens after? We can extend. That's just the initial agreement of seven years, the lease seven years. So, and how many parking spaces is it? Eight. Eight. Yeah. And that satisfies all of your employees? 
it, it would be, I think we'll have like 10 employees on site. So we'll have two kind of taking up the current. I don't know if you want to talk about the parking calculations, but for the calculations, we have we have sufficient as is. So this is kind of an extra uh, extra benefit to have the majority of our employees, you know, park kind of off, you have, off the main one. You have sufficient parking for the customers or for the employees? I think per the calculation, we have for both. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Per regulation. Yeah, per the regulation, sorry. Yeah. So you already entered into this agreement, you said? Uh, as of today, yes, for the for that extra parking. Sign seal and delivery. Sign seal delivery. Yeah. It was a little premature. Hmm? Well, sorry, it's an LOI. So it is contingent on us moving okay. forward with this. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, no, it's obviously we weren't going to sign it until, unless we got approval on this. And the Hertz parking lot is across the street from this. No, it's uh, just down the street uh, right before. I don't have the exact address. I'm guessing it's about 920 Main Street. It's right before uh, the yeah. Ari's Martial Arts Center. Uh, so it's the same, same side of the street. Same side of the street. I, I got it. Yeah, I think they use it for litter in some mm -hmm. cars. Yeah, so, potentially, yeah. But it's it's a it's a fairly small kind of compact lot. I think it, I measure eight parking spots there. With the uh, the additional parking on the uh, house lot. You meet all setbacks for the house. You're not uh, encroaching like those parking spaces aren't going into the side yard where the house is too close to that parking. No, this is all existing. So this whole the gray area right here, this is all paid currently. We just want to make sure that we can continue using those that area for parking. Okay, is that house a residential zone right now, or is that a uh, LP? It's, it's, it's it's in local business. Any other commissioners have any comments? Starley, you're all set for now. I've got one, uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry, Donovan. Welcome. How are you? I was attending the meeting also this evening. Thanks. Um, so the the additional employee parking is the is the at the Hertz site. I could I couldn't. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know if that's official. That's what that's what our broker and it, that's what that line says the former herd sites. I don't know if it has the four miners, but I have it between I have it right, you know, I'm guessing 920 Main Street. Uh, but yeah, it's I measured it was 940 from that lot to our lot. So sorry, not the 240. Same side of the street. Same side of the street, just okay. you know, 250 feet towards downtown. So you've got is is there uh, existing sidewalk there now, or are you going to have your employees walking along the uh, the grass way there? Or uh, there, there isn't an ex there isn't an existing sidewalk, but there is one uh, proposed or it, basically the construction contracts been put out, I believe, by the city uh, to to construct the sidewalks all along East Main Street. Um, we're basically expecting to be opening earlier than the sidewalk is completed. So we would be looking to do the, the, the sidewalk improvements on the front of our property prior to that. Uh, but it, it would be, I suspect, fairly closely thereafter. Okay, thank you. And, and I could just I could just add we didn't you know and obviously in our review we didn't factor in the offsite parking we're only reviewing what you know what's on the site. So with the two parking spaces that go for rental on that house, we still meet the requirements. Yeah, we're, we we are more than more than sufficient to meet the requirements even without the two parts. Just as an aside, there is. Uh, parking for a small driveway for the 92 Yorkshire that's separate from, from our property or from our, our parking lot uh, where they also park presently, mm -hmm. but it's it's fairly limited for it's only probably one or one and a half cars in size. Hey, Jeremy, do you have your memo? Please. Yes. Yep. So if there is a you know a, a lot of traffic going on to Yorkshire, is there a no parking on one side of that street? Everybody know that mm -hmm. on Yorkshire. 
I'm just envisioning customers parking on that street. I'm not sure. I've never noticed a lot of parking on that street, but oh. I haven't been really looking either. <laughs> So, traffic then look at that, Jared. Oh, you mean if, yeah. if there was, it, did they comment on that? No. No, I, I mean, I don't know if you looked at it, but there was there was nothing to, to that effect in the comments. Go ahead, Jeremy. Um, okay, Patrick Johnson has filed an application for three adjacent properties, 957 East Main Street, tax assessor map 133, Block 012, lot 007, tax assessor map 133, block 012, lot 015, and a portion of 92 Yorkshire Street, tax assessor map 133, block 012, lot 019, to request the following approvals. One, to adopt the alternate incarceration cannabis dispensary overlay zone on two of the properties, on two of the properties and a portion of 92 Yorkshire Street. Two, to change the use from the current bus parking and office use to an adult use cannabis retail establishment. And three, site improvements to modify parking, landscaping, signage, and to add a sidewalk along East Main Street. The properties are owned by James, Robert, and Richard Ross, are a combined 22,651 square feet, 0.52 acres in total area, and are all located in the LB local business zone. A previous site plan approval under application number 822 was approved in January 2007 to change the property use to a bus station and has expired. The proposed adult use cannabis retail establishment is a conforming use in the LB zone with the adoption of an AM overlay zone under zoning regulations section 3.1, table of permitted uses, subsection 22.03, and section 4.16, alternate incarceration, cannabis dispensary overlay zone, AM zone. A zone change hearing and a new, and a new site plan approval, approval are required for this proposed project. <clears throat> An A2 quality property survey has been submitted titled, Property Survey Prepared for the Collective, 957 East Main Street, by Close, Jansen, and Miller PC, consulting engineers, land planners, and surveyors, Weathersfield, Connecticut, dated September 28th, 2022, one sheet. A plan set including a zone change map, site plan and grading plan has been submitted titled The Collective 957 East Main Street, Torrington, Connecticut by East West Engineering, West Hartford, Connecticut, dated October 18, 2022, five sheets. The contents of the zone change and A2 survey sheets meet the basic requirements for a zone change application. Staff has met previously with the property owner and engineer to discuss the project prior to this meeting. Other items of note, one, no significant changes to the exterior of the existing building are proposed. Two, details on the proposed freestanding sign are missing. A full final design of the sign is not required, but the applicant should provide basic details on the proposed sign in accordance with section 8.4.3.L of the regulations specifically proposed lighting, sign colors, general dimensions, and height. Freestanding signs shall be limited to no more than five feet in height and 20 square feet in accordance with the regulations. Three, property boundaries between 957 East Main Street and the adjacent parcel to the north currently bisect the existing building and should be combined as a condition of approval. Four, some parking for the business is currently located on the property that is a residential use at 92 Yorkshire Street. Limited screening should be proposed for the residential use and an easement provided for the area used for the business related parking on the 92 Yorkshire Street property. Five, according to the notes on the submitted zone change map, sheet ZC-1, there are no parks, playgrounds, schools, recreational facilities, child care centers, or libraries within 500 feet of the subject properties. Six, the nearest approved adult use cannabis retail facil facility in the city is approximately five miles away from this property on Winstead Road. Seven, in my opinion, the proposed use, location, and site design is compatible with the neighborhood and surrounding uses. Um, other staff comments, 
Economic Development, Rista Malanka, City of Torrington Economic Development Director, Rista Malanka, AICP, Torrington Economic Development Director, verbally indicated her support for the zone change and site plan application after discussion on potent potential distribution of adult use cannabis locations in the city. Wetlands Conservation, Landscaping, Lighting and Signage, Nate Nardi Cyrus, Assistant City Planner, in an email to me dated October 31st, 2022, offered the following comments on the plans. Wetlands, there are no regulated wetlands or water courses in the vicinity of the subject property that require wetlands review for the proposal. This constitutes a favorable wetlands report for this application. Landscaping, the landscaping plan satisfies section 5.11 of the zoning regulations. Based on the sub submitted plans, it is my understanding that plants C and D will be located at the same elevation as single family residents and not at the parking lot level. Because these shrubs are short, they will not properly screen the residents unless they are planted above the parking lot elevation. I recommend using a native tree species as an alternative to the London plane tree. Good alternatives would include red maple, river birch, or white oak. Lighting, no lighting is shown on the site plan. New lighting must comply with section 5.17 of the city zoning code, including the, including the use of full cutoff fixtures. We encourage the use of products approved by the International Dark Sky Association. Signage, there are no new signage pro signs proposed as part of this application. A sign permit shall be required before installing any signage in accordance with section 5.15 of the zoning regulations. Conservation, this application was not referred to the Conservation Commission for review and comment. Architectural Review Committee, no significant changes are proposed to the building exterior or the site that rise to the level of requiring ARC review. Torrington Area Health District, TAHD, offered no comments on these plans. Engineering, Paul Cunzen, City Engineer, in an email dated to me, uh, email to me dated November 1st, 2022, submitted marked up plans, sheets GR1 and SP1 for correction by the applicant's engineer. Police traffic, police traffic Sergeant Dustin Baldus in an email to me dated November 10th, 2022, offered the following comments on, these, on the plans. Changes look good. My only suggestion is to have the exit direct them east on Yorkshire to the signalized intersection and put the bump out of the raised island on the west one directing people up. The sign should have the arrow then facing right. Less chance of angle crashes for people trying to make a left onto East Main Street again. Other than that, it looks good. Fire, Fire Marshal Edward Gassetta, in an email to me dated November 8th, 2022, offered the following comments on the plans. The building should be equipped with a complete and compliant fire protection system compatible with the change of use. The fact it will be vacant during non-business hours make it a prime candidate for delayed discovery of a fire inside. Torrington makes use of lock boxes to allow quick access by firefighters in time of an alarm without causing damage. If not already in existence, a lock box should be installed on the exterior of the building near the main door. The fire department will use its secure master key to open the box and allow the building owner to leave appropriate building access keys inside. This eliminates any delay in entering the building or waiting for a key holder to arrive in the middle of the night. The building and area must comply with all required lighting and electrical codes and will be inspected by the, by the fire marshal for compliance with life safety code prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy and annually thereafter. Uh, WPCA, Ray Drew, Public Works Director, in an email to me dated November 3rd, 2022, offered the following comments. One, applicant shall submit for shall, shall, shall submit application for a sewer discharge permit. Two, additionally, additional information required. A, weekly days of operation. B, number of full-time and part-time employees. C, number of clients expected daily. D, projected annual water consumption for the new facility. Three, capacity reserve fee shall be paid prior to the commencement of discharge. Fee will be determined upon receipt of items number one and two above. Four, owner shall certify that there are no discharges of stormwater, either directly or indirectly into the sanitary sewer system from the building. Stormwater discharges shall comply with the City of Torrington Department of Engineering standards. 
A, owner applicant shall contact WPCA to inspect building for compliance with chapter 170-14 of Torrington Code. B, contact James Hilton, 860-485-9166 to schedule inspection. Five, applicants shall use, shall use best management practices to minimize the amount of fats, oil, and greases that are just discharged to the public sewer. Six, occupants shall use best management practices to minimize the use of phosphate containing cleaners, cleaners and detergents. Seven, submit copies of any federal or state permits related to wastewater discharges. Eight, for additional information or questions, contact WPCA 860-485-9166. Building, building official Kevin Gillette in an email to me dated November 8th, 2022, offered the following comments. Please provide the following information as it pertains when applying for required permits. Complete sets of IBC section 107 required construction documents as applicable, prepared by a registered design professional for all work to be performed. Complete life safety plan with occupant load and occupancy classification. Complete plan for accessibility, including parking and passenger loading facilities. Complete exhaust and makeup air system plans. Complete mechanical and electrical, mechanical, electrical and plumbing plans. Subject to review and on-site correction, it shall be the duty of the permit holder or their agent to notify the building official that such work is ready for inspection. Conclusion, per responses and plan modifications, from the applicant's engineer on November 7th, 2022, and further review by city staff. I recommend approval of site plan number 1426, 957 East Main Street and adjacent parcel, parcels, zone change and site plan change of use with the following conditions and recommendations. One, the applicant shall follow comments of Nate Nardi Cyrus, assistant planner, outlined in his October 31st, 2022 email to the city planner. Two, the applicant shall make plan corrections based on comments and plan markups from Paul Cunzins, city engineer, outlined in his November 1st, 2022 email to the city planner. Three, the applicant shall address traffic flow comments from police traffic sergeant Dustin Baldus in his November 10th, 2022 email to the city planner. Four, the applicant shall follow the recommendations of Fire Marshal Edward Bassetta in his November 8th, 2022 email to the city planner regarding lockboxes. Five, the applicant shall follow the comments of Ray Drew, Public Works Director, outlined in his November 3rd, 2022 email to the city planner regarding sewer discharge permitting. Six, the applicant shall follow the building permit requirements outlined by building official Kevin Gillette in his November 8th, 2022 letter to the city planner. Seven, properties known as 957 East Main Street, tax assessor map 133, block 012, lot 007, and tax assessor map 133 block 012 lot 015 shall be combined in the final plans to be filed. A copy of the filed updated deed shall be submitted showing the lot merger. Eight, an easement for parking on the 92 Yorkshire Street property in favor of 957 East Main Street shall be shown on the final plans. A copy of the final updated deed for 92 Yorkshire Street shall be submitted for the application file describing the easement. Nine, the Planning and Zoning Commission finds that the proposed use, location, and site design is compatible with the neighborhood and surrounding uses and is protective of the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the city of Torrington. 10, zoning permits are required prior to the alteration or use of the site for the proposed use. 11, in accordance with Section 8.4.3 and 8.4.6 of the zoning regulations, the following shall be submitted to the city planner. A, two paper copies of the full approved plan set, including the engineer's stamp and chairman's signature box on the title page. B, one Mylar copy of site plan sheet SP-1 for filing with the city clerk in accordance with section 8.4.3.P of the zoning regulations. The Mylar sheet shall bear chairman signature box, a copy of the approval letter from the commission, an engineer's seal and a live ink stamp. C, Mylar sheet shall be filed by the applicant with the city clerk after signature of the chairman and prior to approval of zoning permits to begin construction or site work. Um, and I also added right at the end, the hours of operation shall be nine to eight, Monday through Saturday, 
and 10 to 5 on Sunday. Thank you, Jeremy. Chair, just a quick uh, question. Under your other items of note, number five, according to the notes on the uh, zone change map, there are no parks, playgrounds, et cetera. Yep. Do you know how close the Karate Studio is to this, Lawrence? By chance? Um, let's, I, don't, I don't have the map in front of me, but can you, Nate, can you uh, scroll up to that? About 300 feet. It's pretty close. It's about 300 feet. It's right next to that parking lot. The Hertz parking lot right next door. If that's 250, it's only another 50 feet to the studio. If that. So what's an advocate? I'm One other question I have uh, besides that, and you can think about your distance there. Um, where's the front door on that building? Right now, there's uh, three doors and three garage doors. Uh, we would keep the two doors on each side, left and right. Um, the one kind of towards East Main Street would be the entrance. Entrance. The one toward York Street would be the exit. And then there's actually a small door on the side of the building, which would be just be for deliveries, which would be used maybe three times a week. Okay. Um, I took the opportunity uh, the last couple of months to take a drive. And I'm just asking you this question just to see how your operation works. Okay. I took the uh, opportunity to drive out to Great Barrington to the facility that was right over the skateboard. And when you walk in, uh, it basically, it's like, man, it's really regulated. I mean, they look at everything. You pretty much have to keep your kids away to just to walk through the building. Um, but they didn't let everybody in all at once. It was very one at a time, make sure everything was fine. If you're talking 250 people a day, what's that? 20 to 30 an hour? Yeah. Approximately? It's not, yeah. And okay, that, where, where would those people stand at that front entrance door? Because in Great Barrington, they have an area like a corral or whatever where people would be lined up on the front door. So we do have a little bit of uh, queuing area on the left side where the people enter. But if you do the math, the average waiting time is about six minutes per, sorry, the average in and out time, visiting time is about six minutes per. So even if we ratchet that up to 400 people an hour, uh, sorry, 400 people per day, it only comes out to concurrent four people at a time in the store on average, right. on average. Right, exactly. Yeah. I totally agree with that because it's not overly crowded. Yeah. You should walk in. Um, Yeah. Sorry, so just to elaborate that there is there is once you get in, there's kind of holding pants, right. you call it that. So so yeah, so weather if weather doesn't, you know, they don't want to get outside because we don't have that area you come inside, we can we should be able to manage the volume that we expect fairly easily inside the building. Okay, now are are you gonna be doing I, I know a lot of these delivery places like DoorDash and places like that, they do home delivery. So you're gonna be doing that. This is just a retail site. We are not allowed to deliver as part of our license. I know there's other licenses coming up in the state that's gonna allow for delivery. Who that's something East does it in DoorDash? That's, yeah, I mean so here it would be it wouldn't be somebody like that. It would hit the state is giving away a few, I don't know how many uh, delivery licenses that's mm -hmm. going to come and be able to work with operators uh, to pick up the product both medical and adult use and deliver to the person at their home. So that is something where we would explore, um, but per, we couldn't do it on our own. We don't have the license. This is just purely retail adult use only license. So it's not like picking up a pizza and dropping it off. No, no, no. Gotcha. Any other questions? Have any comments? Questions? I, I have a question. Go ahead, sir. Um, Jeremy, did we, when they did the um, traffic analysis, did they account for the increased volume of people who are outside of Torrington? 
So I did not review the traffic study. Um, Sergeant Baldus did, uh, and he didn't raise he didn't raise any concerns on that specifically to to me, or I assume to the applicant that I, that maybe I didn't see. Okay. So I mean, I I've seen a couple of these places, and and traffic usually, you know, is sometimes horrendous that's why some of these locations are out in very like open areas where you know people can pull in and have enough parking space um you know east main street is, is tough already as it is right um and then yorkshire is kind of like a neighborhood street so i'm yeah. a, I'm a little concerned about the amount of traffic that's going to be coming in and out Mm -hmm. Um, because we're not just talking about residents of Torrington, we're talking about residents from neighboring areas who don't have close access to a retail location. Yeah, and, and I, I do know that it would have been a lot tougher on this site had they not had a rear exit. Um, the the one plus in it and it, you know, it it's almost uh I mean, it's not the same, but it's but it's a good a good comparison and was our previous Starbucks approval. Having the ability to exit these sites and go out to a stoplight makes makes traffic a whole lot safer. But again, the the trade off is the traffic has to the like the at least the opposite side of Yorkshire Street is residential. So I mean, there there is the you know sort of the trade off in this neighborhood. You can get out to a light, but you do have to exit into a at least half of a residential street to get out there. I'm sure that over time, the customers, which will be repeating customers, obviously, will learn how to get out of that site and get onto that site with the least amount of uh, difficulty as possible. So I would expect at some point that uh, that residential street would be used in both directions, probably down to Tioga, and Tioga would come out onto East Main Street. Um, it has a different site line. Uh, so it's it's you know it's there. You know, you're not going to prevent its use. It's it's going to be utilized to whatever extent uh, general public wants to use it. Jerry, this is Polaris. According to uh, the internet, it looks like it's 364.2 feet away from this facility, which is loaded with kids and people of all ages. Which I'm sorry, I, I I missed part of that, Greg. You know, we're looking at the, the 500 foot circle, so to speak, child care centers, recreational facilities, and so forth. <laughs> Polaris karate studios are within 364.2 feet of this facility. Yeah, so we don't. And we don't specifically define what a recreational facility is, but when, what we're thinking about that is it's more of a, you know, your, your baseball fields and your, um, you know, uh, your, I, I, will, I won't say just like municipal things, but um, the karate studios fit under like, a, like, I mean, at least the way we define, we, we've always defined it as it fits under like a gym. Um, even though it's for all for all ages, including children, it's it's like a more more of a gym use that the way we've we've defined it in the past. Um, you know how we how we define it for for proximity. We we just haven't gone drilled down to the level of actually trying to define what a recreational facility is. I mean, I relate that to almost being you know similar like a dance studio. You know, the, the class starts at five o'clock. Mom and pop are dropping their kids off. Yep. There's a lot of activity, you know, half an hour, an hour later, whatever the time frame is of the, the class, everybody is discharged and, and let out. Yeah. Mr. Carroll had a, a valid point that, that I'd like to touch upon again. You know, in light of the, the parking size and location of the, the facility, you know, my concern is people are going to pull out of Yorkshire and start parking That's what if, if the parking is, is jammed up. And again, I frown on applications where there's off street parking right out of the gate required to accommodate the facility as is. 
at the corner of Yorkshire, there's also that other commercial building where our office used to be. And there's quite a few parking spots there. And I envision people parking and walking down as well. So, yeah. Could I interject for a minute? Sure. Please. And that, um, basically, that our, our concern is the same as yours, that we wanted to make sure there was as much parking on the site so that we wouldn't have that problem. Uh, if this was a typical retail use, your regulations would require nine parking spaces on this site. Knowing that we, we could have up to 10 employees, that obviously doesn't make sense. So what we've done is our original intent was to get as much parking, to keep as much parking on the site as possible so that we wouldn't ever have that problem. And then to ultra ensure that we've gone out and gotten eight more parking spaces for our employees so that we aren't concerned that that would ever be a problem because it's not good for, for business if you don't have enough parking. Um, you know, the old adage that the supermarkets and Walmarts do where they want 50% of the outer parking lot empty so that people driving by don't think the store is busy. It's not quite the same here, but we do not want a situation where people come here, can't find a parking space, and then don't come back. I mean, that's just not good for business. So we've gone out of our way to make sure we've got plenty of parking from, from the point of view of our use. Um, How many parking spots do we have? Uh, we have 23 parking spots, or 24, excuse me, parking spots, which includes the one handicapped spot. And then we have eight more parking spots off site. Your, your uh, statement was that if it, even if you brought the 10 on site, you'd still meet the, uh, the requirements. So, so, so we have, I would say that 12 or 20 parking spots. You only require nine, then you're, you're in good shape, yeah. even if you pull every employee by. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we certainly share your concern, and that's why we're, you know, if the, the site doesn't work for us, then we you certainly do won't that. Use it. And you have an option, you know, and, and you know, I'm still with my hands saying you know, you had this more of a likelihood that you would find other places to park because you just you consume so many. It, it, so. it is it is worth noting too that what we're typically trying to do, try and work with the local police department to have kind of uh, uh, the police uh, presence when we first opened, kind of help manage to manage the kind of traffic flow. The town is allowed to charge us fifty thousand dollars to kind of do those things. Yeah. And that's something we, we typically offer up or, or at least want to do. And then we'll, we'll kind of keep it going as long as we need until kind of everything kind of settles down. Because there is that initial rush, maybe the first week or two. And then after that kind of thing steady. And the way Connecticut's doing it too, which is unlike some of the things you saw in Massachusetts is, Massachusetts, it was kind of a rolling admission and the process was, was messy to be honest. And, you know, here, the way Connecticut is doing it is everybody's kind of getting ready for it. And when they do turn it on, it's going to be in the kind of 20, 30, 40 kind of stores opening at once, probably. So it's not, you're not going to see the kind of the one or two stores that's going to have three hours of, of, of queue. That's not happening. Maybe we can just clear my head here. You're talking 250 customers a day. What are 10 people doing back there in the facility? Well, well that's what I'm saying. At the, so we're going to be hiring dynamically. So to be, there's going to be some peaks on Friday, Saturdays. So we'll kind of have people ready to work then. And we're going to staff accordingly, right? I think we, we want to make sure that we have people so that we can get people. So we want to make sure we're overstaffed so that when people come in, the weight is minimal and they kind of go in and out so they don't take out the parking spots. That's, you know, that's. So as Commissioner Babinski uh, question, how many people are standing at the counter at one time. We have eight, we will have, we are set up for eight registers. Not all eight registers will be active at, any, at you know, some days of the week, right? On some of the busier days, we'll probably have eight registers going. Maybe on Monday morning, we'll have three registers open, right? We're gonna kind of man accordingly. But then you'll have people back at the house helping kind of fulfill the orders. We'll have somebody to check in, kind of manager in sight. So it, it does that up. You don't have to sort it out based on what your experience is. I mean, that's just the way business. Yeah, I mean, I guess just, just for clarification, I was the former regional president of Cure Relief. Um, I managed 28 stores, uh, 1,200 people, 1,200 people in seven states. So I've opened plenty of these. Uh, you know, we've always done it in a good way. I believe uh, we've never had any major issues. 
We try to kind of work very proactively with with the local different departments to make sure that you know any any feedback we incorporate right away uh, we can react to, um, and it's worked fairly well in the past. And you know, I encourage you if 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 you know. Uh, the police chief wants to reach out to some of our on my other former operations in Massachusetts and how we work with police departments there. I, you know, encourage that. Um, I'm sure there's going to be nothing but positive feedback there. So, in your previous stores that you've managed, the, the rush really is the first month. Say, like it's almost like a. If it's there's, like I mean, there's an the excitement there. Let I mean, people it, come to check it out. Yeah, and it, it kind depends. of takes off. Yes, it, it, there is an obviously an initial kind of buzz. Yep. It does depend on the state by state basis how they do it, right? In Connecticut, I'm mean, sorry, New Jersey, they turned on, I think when they first turned on, it was eight stores. And New Jersey is always quite a bit bigger than Connecticut. So there was lines because there's only eight stores available. I think the way Connecticut is doing it, because everybody's kind of getting ready now, and they're going to allow the current operators to flip kind of overnight if they're ready as well. So there's going to be quite a few stores, I believe, when the, fi when the program finally comes on. Hopefully, end of Q1, maybe sometime Q2 is what I'm hearing. Um, you know, there, a lot of these operators will be ready, and, you know, ready to open the door. So you're gonna, you're gonna get, you know, it's gonna be spread out across all these different stores. Okay. How much more increase in traffic? Not cars, meaning parking spaces, but traffic is generated by this use versus the present use. Um. I mean, we're and, and the reason I'm asking this is because of the residential street. Yeah. I really have a problem with all of that traffic going down the residential street because I know I own a business and I know when people don't have the parking, they're parking anywhere. And if it happens to be on a residential street in front of your house where there's a little kid playing, it doesn't matter because they're going where they want to go. Well, I mean, we're, we're estimating 250 uh, visitors or 250 patrons, so about 500 vehicles a day uh, divided by, if it's equally distributed, it's about 50 cars an hour, but about 500 vehicle trips a day. Uh, the present use is a bus garage, bus yard. Um, I'm not, we did not do counts on the buses. And, well, the buses weren't there. Yeah, the buses, I guess, were still there the last time we were in there. But we did not do counts on the buses. But at the present time, there is a chain across the entrance out to East Main Street. So all bus traffic from that facility has been using your chairs, my understanding. But how many buses are there? Uh, well, they're lined up on both sides, so 20 to 25 buses. I don't know if there's a how long. Just 15 here. 15? Okay, their number's 15. I don't know how often in and out they go. Once, and then they come back and they sit there pretty much all day and then they I go back again. Know. Is that how that works? They, they usually go out for like a morning route, right. come back. Sometimes sometimes they're gone all day. There's not, not a it's lot of It's not in and out, in and out, in and out. No. So, right, we'll get to the public in just a minute. Okay. Do any other commissioners have any comments or questions before I go to the public? All right. I, 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 uh, yeah. I have a quick one. Um, I'm just I'm just interested, Jeremy, in, in, in following up a little bit on the 500 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, um, what would you say is the what was the purpose of the 500 foot border in the first place? When you say it applies to um, um, parks and and uh, what was it basically to separate out children from uh, close proximity to a retail cannabis store? Well, it was it wasn't a hard separation distance. It was the ability for us to look at the factors, you know. So there there may be a factor where something is 500 feet away but there's a buffer of say a, a lot of stuff in between where we were or something's 400 feet away but it's fine if it's you know something that we're concerned about is it if there's a school 300 feet away on a main road there's a difference between maybe having a school that's that's separated by a bunch of businesses you know uh, i i mean we didn't want to set a hard 
separation, but we wanted to have the ability to weigh to weigh those uses. Um, the only reason why I say definitions is is we were we had a certain thought about recreational facilities and like uh, private like I, I'll just admit like a private karate studio never came into the into the thought process when we were thinking we were thinking like your your soccer fields and your and your um your your public basketball courts and your you know think you know that kind of stuff. So more so so more around um the maybe the unsupervised yeah group we, of okay. kids that so 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 this distinguish is distinguished by the fact that you may you maybe have parents dropping off and picking up and right right there right. okay right. I understand thank you so when we define it sense. when we define something like that in in like if they were doing a change of use to a karate studio it would be like the same as a gym regardless of what age people were you know using it. Uh, and we just didn't define it. So if it, it is really an open question for the commission, but I, I could just tell you what our thought was when we were when we were putting it together for, you know, framing it out for the commission. Appreciate that. That helps uh, quite a bit. Thanks, Chair. And, you know, there seems to be this sensitivity to the use of residential street and parking and reversing the traffic. I would think there would be a remedy to that. And I think my first suggestion helps a little bit, which is saying right turn only on the back of that lot. And you can only go to the signal. You can't go left, you have to go right. And that takes a lot of uh, that street out of play because there's, there's certainly more on that road that goes down towards Diode Street than goes up towards the signal. And not only that, but you go up towards the signal, there's more businesses up that way. You have Riley's, you know, I forgot what the corner building is now, it keeps changing, but we're not even you guys used to. I I know, yeah. There, yeah. So, my point is that you know, there's remedies to this if you're willing to do it. And as far as parking goes, you know, you, you know, tell traffic, you know, I want you up there and I want you to put no parking signs in. This is, we don't want any parking on that street. And um, so, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know how you feel about it, Jeremy, but I'm feeling like uh, we could probably. Um, lessen the sort of concern about the residential street by doing those couple things. And I mean, basically, what you're doing is you're forcing the circulation out of the lot to go where it'll have the least impact on the residents. And I, I won't get into Sergeant Baldus's head, but I think that was his thought too to direct everybody in one direction. That's just my thought. Yeah, but again, there's no way to regulate that somebody leaving the parking lot is in the turn right. Oh, we have to go up the hill. We have that now. We have a lot of other places. <laughs> it says right on the moment, right? You know, and that's even the aspect, you know, even if you change the, the entrance and exit out of the, the front of it on East Main, you know, no left turn, you know, people disregard that. I mean, yeah. you know, without specific uh, other businesses on East Main, you know, people disregard the signs all the time. Yep. Yeah, Greg, I agree that, you know, in fact, I would, you know, I'm backing off on my request to consider a no left turn on this lane. I would give that up to have a right turn only on the rear of the line. So you can, you can move the traffic. I want to go to Tioga. No, I mean, and go around and move out. Yeah, people are going to do that. Well, it's, you can't control it unless you pop at least in there. But at least you can force the issue by putting in the curb cut the way you want it, and we can say right turn only. And that's the way. It and I'm sorry, that, and that, that is what we did based on the feedback from the chief, right? We we kind of New York, yeah, Yorkshire, right? The back of the yeah, 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 yeah. So we had a little bump out on the on the on the curb cut here, and it's it's going to be a sign right turn only. Right? We do have we did incorporate this based on based on feedback from the chief, right? Yeah, so kind of curved that way. And I mean, you can accentuate that even more. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna have, we're gonna have signage and we'll kind of have it kind of right, you know, significant curve. We're gonna have our time being left behind. So, I could make it real hard for you. I could. I can have you thing up your alloy wheels like crazy trying to make all that paint turn. So. Can I just touch upon the concern with on the traffic on your share? Obviously, we didn't want to necessarily restrict all the left turns to make them go out to Yorkshire because of the obviously the traffic on the road um you know your, your question on about the amount of traffic now on your share versus what we'd be putting on 
we're looking at about 500 vehicle trips a day. Uh, 250 of those would be entering and 250 exiting. All of the entering would be from East Main Street because we've indicated no entrance from Yorkshire. Uh, now, realistically, the majority of the traffic centers is towards the Route 8 corridor and towards the, the, the center of town. So the majority of the traffic we expect would be taking the right turn out of the site. So at the most, we'd have, even if it was a 50-50 split, it would be about 120 uh, vehicles going out Yorkshire. If there's 15 buses now and they make two trips a day and they're always exiting out of Yorkshire, uh, that's 60 vehicle trips, plus the vehicle trips for the vehicles coming with bus drivers to come to the buses to take them out. And then, so there's vehicles coming down your chair, pulling in, parking, taking a bus, leaving, coming back with a bus, and then leaving with their vehicle. So that's, a, if you figure 15 buses, two trips a day, coming in and out, that's 60 trips for the buses and 60 trips for the people the drivers coming to and from the site twice a day. So it's approximately the same amount of traffic if you're looking at it realistically on Yorkshire. Realistically, we expect more, more of our vehicles to be taking a right turn out of, out of the site than a left turn. Um, so they would just be taking a right turn on the East Main Street directly. So that's just off the top of my head, looking at the 15 buses that are there if they're making two trips a day. Okay, well, one other question. The uh, the travel with going out onto Yorkshire is how wide? That entrance right there where you have your apron or whatever. Oh, to make that turn. I mean, we've shown it at 24 feet. Okay, 24 feet would be going in and out. How do we not down to 12 feet and get rid of that last space there? Because it looks like that last space up towards Yorkshire, you're only widening that so that person has a way of turning to get to do a three point turn to get out onto Yorkshire. So why don't you lose that space, cut that down to 12 feet, and then you're really saying to people, you have to go to the right. Uh, instead uh, of the 20 certainly to do that, we, we expected the, uh, you know, to, to keep it at 24 to allow a dumpster truck to make that maneuver. Well, um, dumpster truck's coming in off of uh, East Main. He does his thing and he goes back out the way you want him to go. I mean, if, if you look at, the easiest thing for a dumpster truck would be to come in, circle, come here, back out, and go out. Right. So I mean, you could certainly feet. look at, at that, making that down. Right. Further. That's what I just said. Sure. And then get rid of that other space. So that way, the, the second space coming up has a way to do a three point turn to go back out the 12 foot lane. Because it tells me that they, you only put that speed, that uh, 24. So back it down here so you can do that, you say? Anyway, we can certainly pick that out. <laughs> what I'm saying is get rid of this. This guy here goes like this, and he goes back up. This guy here, just bring this over to here and make that tighter. Right. That way you're really showing us that it's a red turn out. But now anybody can do whatever they want. Yeah, I mean the reality, no matter what you do, you know, I mean you can try to force people to do stuff and direct them, but you know, I mean I guess we would certainly be, be amenable to working on that. Yeah, I mean we certainly took an attempt at it, right? We we yeah. did narrow, we changed the flow, we're putting up signage, and if 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 we need to bump it out another four or five whatever feet, yeah, we'll us do that because that was the intent of this change. If you don't think this is enough, we'll kind of take it a step further. That is not a problem. Yeah. We're looking it's unfortunate that this site abuts a residential neighborhood. You know, you're introducing that whole broad spectrum of activity back there. No, we understand. I mean, we, we, I mean, we, we looked kind of in a lot of different, we looked for months in, in Torrington. I know we looked downtown. I know that wasn't part of kind of where it was zoning. So this was a viable site. And then we worked with the town for, for a bit now. And I think the general consensus was that this was a good viable site. Um, and that's kind of how we kind of came to this point. I don't think it's unworkable. I just think it needs to spend more time on the concern, which is we want to really 
we really want to buffer the residential part from the activity. So, I mean, the fact, that, the, fact that you, the fact that you hadn't allowed in any turn ins from the, from the residential street is a good thing. So, that was a good move in the right direction. And all we're trying to say right now is what? Let's try to come up with a way that uh, really, you know, makes it obvious to the people that you really can't go left. You have to go right out of the back of the property. You want to go left? You want to not do that? Then fine, walk the other way. You have both ways to get, get in. Uh, I mean, I think it's, if that's a condition on approval for us to tighten that and kind of have it be 45 degrees onto that road so you can't really make it, don't have to be a jackknife turn on, say, you know, Georgia, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly accommodate that. And we can, uh, that certainly could work with staff to, to, to meet your concerns. Yeah. Any other commissioners have any comments before I go to the public? Maybe none. Would anyone like to speak in favor of this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Being none, would anyone like to speak in opposition of this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Yes. Thank you very much. My name is Kimberly Grustis, and I am here on behalf of Pat and James Grustis, of owners of 977 East Main Street with five apartments at Yorkshire Street. Um, my goal is to give you a comprehensive data on location selection and parking comparisons for medical marijuana facilities owned by Cure Relief, as well as similar recreational marijuana retail locations as proposed by Nutmeg Northwest JV LLC. I will show you in his own words that Patrick Johnson knows quite well, based on his experience with Cure Relief, that this location is extremely unfit, undersized, and unsafe for a recreational cannabis retail store. Um, we heard from, I'm sorry, Mr. Levinsky, yes. that he has visited a recreational marijuana facility. So I, well, just to observe. Yes, yes. Maybe 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 too. Um, as a show of hands, would anyone else like to tell me who had, else has been to a facility? So I had never, um, and that was where I started my research. Um, I have handouts for everybody. May I? Don't get ahead. For the record. Pardon? You're splitting these for the record. I'm submitting these for the record. I also have a PDF. I didn't know I could submit my class this time. Sorry. Thank you. No getting ahead of me. That's exactly what I just said. Um, I want to. This is just an overview of the area from uh, Tioga uh, to the, where the auto park store is. Um, I want to also let you know that the, uh, the following slides that I've compiled um, were obtained from the Cure Relief website, weedmouse.com, Google. The Connecticut Secretary of State and Marijuana Business Daily Magazine. On the first page, um, the first two pages I'm submitting are of the actual Cure Leaf facilities themselves. I want to also indicate that Cure Leaf, the four, the four ones I'm showing you, are actually medical. They are not recreational marijuana facilities. The first one is at 92 Western Street in Hartford. They have 132 parking spots. Cure Leaf in Stanford, they have 96 parking spots. I also want to stop you on this first page and I want to show you, I want you to recognize the locations that these are. Every facility I'm about to show you does not abut any residential location in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Jersey. Go to the next page. The Cure Leaf in Milford, Connecticut has 40 spots. Cure Leaf in Groton 
has 25 spots, but if you can see on that, it also abuts another parking lot. They have access, access to other parking. The next page, just for your viewing pleasure, is an actual shot of the Cure Leaf Growing Facility in Weetaw, Connecticut. I counted 200 plus parking spots. Again, my notes were saying that these facilities are specifically medical marijuana. Their hours are not seven days a week. They have reduced hours, and most of them are not open on Sundays. Based on the research and reports from the recreational marijuana industry, recreational facilities see an average of 400 to 1,000 customers a day. In this example, I will show you fine fettle in Newington, Connecticut. They have 80 parking spots. The population of Newington is 30,000, very similar to Torrington. Apothotherapeutics in Plainville, Massachusetts has 85 plus parking spots. I called almost every one of these facilities. They were lovely, and I interviewed many of them. Um, Plainville population, by the way, has 9,800. And in an article, they state that they see 600 customers a day. Oh, sorry, I had to pick my mistake. Um, Malajan in Northampton, Massachusetts, with a population of 29,000, has 80 parking spots. Native Sun in North Attleboro, Massachusetts, with a population of 24,000, has 77 parking spots. Garden Remedies in Marlboro, Massachusetts, with a population of 41,000, has 80 parking spots, and in an article touted that they see 400 customers a day. Next page. Cana Provisions in Lee, Mass, has 40 parking spots, and adjacent has 25 employees. Um, off-site parking. Jack's Cannabis in Northampton, Massachusetts, with a population of 29,000, has 54 parking spots. And I will also just remind you that all, all of these look nothing like this neighborhood. Next one is the pass in Sheffield, Massachusetts, with a whopping population of 3,300 people. Unfortunately, they were just building this. You can see this facility here. It was out in the middle of nowhere. They have 30 working slots. The people that I interviewed, Jack in Northampton, quote unquote, nonstop open to close. The pass in Sheffield, Mass, customers take as long as they need. They can spend 15 to 40 minutes in the location. Canva provisions in Lee Mass, when asked if the estimate of 225 customers per day was accurate, their direct quote was, oh, they're dreaming. At least double that. Again, I reference a recent article that I read. Garden remedies in Marlboro Mass, 400 customers a day. Apotho Therapeutics, 600 customers a day. Maritas, I apologize, I, I don't know how to say that. Milford, Connecticut, 500 customers a day. And Comkin and Rehoboth, Mass, Mass, 800 customers a day. The following I will read, the following I will read is directly um, from the request uh, for the zone change in site plan and application by Mr. Johnson. The team projects an average of 250 customers a day or an average of 25 per hour, a 30% increase in the first 30 days, 325 customers or 33 an hour. I'm referencing garden remedies in Marlboro Mass with a population of 41,000 as 400 customers a day and 80 parking spots. 
Quote, a new customer would visit every two minutes with an on-site time of six minutes. At peak times, forecasting 16 customers inside at a time. Reminder, based on my interviews, customers' average visits is 10 to 30 minutes. I don't know anything I do in my day that takes me only six minutes. There are 16, so if that's the case, 16 customers and 10 employees is, 60, is 26 parking spots. I say 19 here, I actually counted 20 parking spots. I don't know where they're referencing 24. Further outdoor queuing would be set up using stanchions outside the front facade so as to shield pedestrians from on-site traffic flow. I don't think I have to say that then. He is admitting in his own words that we are shielding pedestrians from on-site traffic flow. He is admitting chaos in the parking lot. He knows very well. Interior design will support eight point of sale registers, he said himself. Eight registers need eight employees, backstop workers, plus security. Quote, I love this, this is my favorite. These hours will maintain quiet enjoyment and quality of life for nearby residents. Again, the hours uh, they're proposing for this operation are Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Sunday, lovely quiet hours of Sunday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, here's an article from Marijuana Patrick, looking quite lovely. Um, this was in January. Um, you're welcome to read this on your own time. Lower application, and this is all braggadocious about why it's opened up. Ready? Everybody prepares. Lower application and licensing fees. I believe I circled this on yours. Creating micro businesses and small business license classes. Restricting vertical integrations or limiting the number of licenses as, op as an operator can hold. More robust social equity programs. I have to admit, I did not know how to sell marijuana or cannabis three days ago. I learned a lot. When recreational facilities opened up in Boston, I'm going to read you quotes. New pot shops, neighborhoods says traffic jams are awful. This has been terrible, Don Gauthier. Um, uh, Lester, I, I should not say it's from Lester. Residents who live near Cultivate testified at the meeting. We have cars outside our house seven days a week, 12 hours a day. We have no life there anymore. It's like living in a fishbowl. It's not fair. Montclair News, a rise in Bloomfield. The closest dispensary to Montclair offering recreational mar marijuana as sales expanded beyond medical use for the first time in New Jersey Thursday. Doors opened at 6 a.m. NewJersey.com reported the dispensary reached its 75-person capacity within 10 minutes. Karen Yee of WNYC said on Twitter, some buyers were on site as early as 4.40 a.m. At another dispensary, the Apothecarium, owned by uh, Terra Ascent in uh, Phillipsburg, he said on Twitter that medical patients were allowed in, in first as recreational users filed out orders on clipboards. People had waited online for two hours. And I provided some photography of that. Montclair, New Jersey. And I encourage all of you, um, readmaps.com. It's a wonderful resource if you're finding marijuana. Um, that's where I started, ended up on my search. I would go to readmaps.com. You can zoom anywhere um, in the country. Um, and it shows you green for medical marijuana, flags, little pot leaves. And then it shows you orange pot leaves for recreational. So I zoomed in. Um, I got the addresses of that because they don't give you, and then I did a Google Maps search. I have 
much more. Again, I went Massachusetts, Connecticut, and all the way to New Jersey um, for my for my, res my research. In summary, not one single medical or recreational marijuana facility in the state of Connecticut, Massachusetts, or New Jersey has an exit or a bus, a residential neighborhood. Every single facility in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Jersey are all located in an isolated location with easy access. Not one recreational marijuana facility within Connecticut, Massachusetts, or New Jersey has fewer than 25 customer parking spots and on average has between 40 and 90. Dispensaries are, this is a direct quote from an article and I apologize I did not reference it. Dispensaries, oh, this was on who to hire. Uh, this article was on how to, you're hiring your personnel for dispensaries. It talks about the readers, it talks about everything. Dispensaries are cash businesses, making them a clear target for criminals. By approving this location, you are knowingly putting the residents and other businesses at risk. Based on his own words, again, on page three of the application, Mr. Johnson confirms that the location at 957 East Main Street is completely inadequate and will be both dangerous and unmanageable. We should not be talking about buffing up curves to destroy someone's hubcaps. Nutmeg Northwest JV LLC fired their business to the Secretary of State on May 31st of this year. On that same day, they also registered companies in Norwalk, New London, Killingly, Hamden, Willington, and a blanket, Southwest Connecticut. Based on the article I presented from Marijuana Business Daily, it is crystal clear, in my opinion, that Mr. Johnson, who lives in Boston, knows nothing nor cares anything about the community of Torrington or the people that live on Yorkshire Street or adjacent businesses. This is, in my opinion, an attempt to pull the wool over the eyes of the planning and zoning and a fast grab to be the first recreational facility in our area without regard to the obvious destruction he admits it will cause. If Mr. Johnson truly cared about Torrington or its residents, he would have taken more time and chosen one of the many properties available better suited for this business with this extreme customer flow. Representing the owners of 977 East Main Street, the many residences who live on Yorkshire Street, and with the evidence I have supplied, I strongly urge you to deny this zone change and tell Mr. Johnson to find a more suitable location if he would like to come to Torrington. I have one um, addendum to this that happened after I prepared this. At 11.45 today, while I was pumping gas at the Apple House, I got a call from someone who identified themselves as David. And David says, I hear you were trying to reach me. I said, I have no idea who you are. He says, I'm from the collective. I don't know who the collective is. We had discussed the fact that my family's business had been in the area for almost 45 years. We knew intimately what Yorkshire Street and East Main Street is all about. We are sensitive to the neighbors and we are sensitive to the traffic. By the way, I did speak um, to the officer that is on this. Um, he gave me Connecticut statistics, traffic statistics, and I know he agreed he's on this. He told me that there have been in that small area of East Main Street, 73 accidents since uh, 2015, and 32 of them have been at the intersection where um, Pine Ridge and Yorkshire. Pine Ridge. Pine Ridge, Yorkshire. Pine Ridge, and Yorkshire. And Yorkshire. And Yorkshire. East Main. And East Main Street. Anyway, I told David, who I do not know his last name, and 
or having got my cell phone number, um, that I'm not opposed to a recreational cannabis facility. That's not my opposition. My opposition is here. And I also told him that if he values um, making a good impression, this location will not be it. If he plans on going to other locations, and as he's already in, other, in the state of Connecticut and he's using Torrington as an example, it will fail. Um, so when I said this location um, is not ideal, it, it will be a nightmare. His direct quote was, we've looked and it was the only space. Today at three o'clock, I, I brought my in-laws to the airport when I was driving from Rude, um, Tweed, New Haven Airport. At three o'clock, I was heading east on East Main Street. I took a video I would love to share with you where the traffic was back all the way up, ironically, to where we're proposing. I stopped and got out of my car and took a picture, which I'm happy to share with you, of the traffic completely stopped all the way down the hill. Is that going to show you the video? Sure. You're very welcome to ask me questions. You want to ask me a question? Why don't you, you finish? You've got more to move. Why don't you finish before? Do you want to see the video? I don't know. I guess you want to show it. So. I do. I would love to show you the video. This was today at 3 o'clock. talking parking songs and I said well where are you where are you going to go and he said I don't know we haven't figured that out yet today we seems like we have a plan that they'll be walking in two feet of snow to get to work on East Main Street I'm sorry if I sound sarcastic this Torrington is very unique this location is very unique and again I'm not opposed to this type of facility, this location is not right for it. And there's no turning back. If you approve this, it will be a nightmare. And as I explained to David, if they need to impress investors, and that's part of it, this is not going to do it. If they need to get the, want to get the good graces of Torrington, this will not do it. It's a public relations nightmare. And it's all kinds of bad things waiting to happen. They need to be on an isolated location with easier, better in and out access and nowhere near a, a nice residential neighborhood like this, who, by the way, is a lot of seniors and many handicapped individuals, including the people in my um, in those apartment building. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak in opposition to this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Hello, my name is James Grustis. Um, I uh, rent at 977 East Main Street. Um, and I work 12 hours a day there, and I have, have been there for 36 years. Um, I think everybody knows East Main Street is a busy place. Right now, Yorkshire Street is a very quiet place. The back of my business is on Yorkshire Street. We have five trucks. There's a bus farm next door with 15 buses. Our trucks go up and downhill usually once a day. They come in in the morning, they come back at the end of the day. Um, we've been there since 1978, or 19, uh, yeah, roughly 1978. Um, and we're good neighbors. 
we look out for our neighbors. Um, we, we respect their property. We don't park in front of their houses. We have our own parking area. Um, and it's a nice neighborhood. Um, there are several people who, Joe Mitchell lives right across the street from their exit. He walks everywhere, he doesn't drive. He's gonna be walking up and down Yorkshire Street. We all slow down and wave to Joe. An extra 500 cars moving up, up and down Yorkshire Street are not necessarily gonna slow down and wave to Joe Mitchell and say hi. So I worry about his safety. I worry about George Gabriel, who is directly across from us, who is now on a scooter. He doesn't get around very well anymore. There's several houses up the street from the exit onto Yorkshire Street, 92 Yorkshire Street. There are five apartments above our business. So there are many people living in that area. There's the house directly next door. She walks everywhere too. That's why they're not using the parking spaces right now because she walks everywhere and, and walks up Yorkshire Street. Um, they show somewhere between 19 and 20 spaces there that doesn't allow for snow removal. And I know in our parking lot, takes up on about a 20 by 20 space early in the season to get rid of snow, and probably a 20 by 30 to 20 by 40 space by the end of the season. They're gonna lose anywhere from two to four more of those spaces with snow removal. Um, they talk about 16 customers inside. That's 16 spaces just for the people inside. People are gonna be queued outside. They have to park too. Where are they going to park? Well, they're gonna park on Yorkshire Street in front of people's houses. They're gonna park in my parking lot where I have a loading dock, where I need to be able to load in equipment. Uh, they're gonna park in my tent spaces because that's the closest spot. Um, there's a walkthrough where people walk through a, a small vacant lot and can get directly to their facility. That's our property. Um, they can block my loading dock, which with supply chain issues the way they've been, um, nobody needs to be waiting longer for equipment. There's a school of karate less than 500 feet from their facility. Directly across the street, about 120 feet away, is a driving school with 16-year-old kids who are there lined up on the deck outside and could easily cross the street there. Other excess parking, or if people are driving to uh, their, their facility, the only other places with uh, excess parking or, or a lot of parking are across East Main Street, which means they have to run across East, East Main Street to the next street driving parking lot or to the Charlotte Hungerford and um, gymnasium space, Club 24, across the street, which means people running directly across East Main Street, peak time, five to eight o'clock in the dark, while people are trying to go up and down East Main Street. Um, the sign, they mentioned the sign was posted. The sign was not posted. I have pictures almost every day of that sign laying on the ground. Today, somebody came by at about one o'clock and put the sign up. That sign's been down for all week, maybe longer. The first windstorm that blew through, which is probably the weekend before last, blew that sign down and it's been down the whole time. So then the sign was not posted. There hasn't been access to that space on East Main Street for probably a decade. Nobody's, nobody has entered that space from East Main Street. It's been roped off. So now we're gonna all of a sudden introduce 500 cars through uh, a space that nobody's been using. Um, my business, we have four people who work there. And then there's another um, office next door and another office next to, to that, six people. Six people come in and out of there once or twice a day. I can tell you, I've waited 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes to get out onto East Main Street at five o'clock at night. Even if I, even if I go down the hill, you can wait a long, long time. And, and that's four of us in my office. I don't think people who have been 
shopping in there are going to be as patient as we are because we do it every day. There's a lot of traffic on East Main Street. Uh, I know there's some businesses on uh, Yorkshire Street. We are small businesses. There's an insurance agent there. Um, we are a small HVAC company. The, the, the bus barn, I'll tell you, I almost never see a bus going up and down Yorkshire Street. They get out on the road and they're, they're on their way. Um, they mentioned that they'd be putting sidewalks in and developing in front of that. No, the sidewalks are going in whether any of us want them or not. I'm losing two parking spaces and they were going to lose those spaces in the front regardless because they're taking the first 10 feet to put the sidewalks in. That, that, that was not something they're doing out of their kindness of their heart. Um, I think as far as the definition of school, a karate school is a school, a driving school is a school. Kids are going in and out of there. Kids are pretty creative. I know when I was their age, it was illegal to have marijuana. Well, kids now that it's illegal, I think kids are going to find a way if they're if they're close by and they want to experiment. And if there are 500 people going in and out of that place, who knows who's willing to, to sell to a kid? I don't know. There's a lot of people going through. There's going to be a lot of additional traffic down, uh, down that street. If we're moving that many more people. That's additional traffic. There's no avoiding that. And I think their estimates are very light. As my, uh, Kimberly spoke, there's going to be a lot more people than anybody's anticipating. And there is not a parking. I don't know what recourse any of us have after they start parking in front of people's houses. They start parking in my parking spaces. They start parking in my tenant parking spaces. They start parking in front of my loading pad. What recourse do we have at that point? It's the damage is done. I'm open to any questions. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Comments, questions for Mr. Grosses? No, I don't I'll make a comment. I have nothing to say. Because I think there's more. Yeah, I still make a comment now, or you want to wait? Well, I don't know if there's any more, more yeah. people. Right. Yeah, we'll keep going. going. I want to go to Zoom, too, to make sure there's, if there's anybody out there, too. Mr. Chair, I'd like to speak. It's Mario Longabuco. You speak in favor or opposition, Mr. Long? In favor. All right, we'll shift gears here again. All right, we'll go back. Go ahead. Your name and address for the record, please. Mario Longabuco, 4420 Farm Lane in Torrington. And as a matter of uh, full disclosure, I'm the realtor on that property for the Ross Brothers. Um, it sounds to me like it's it's more... Uh, the use rather than uh, the, the property. I do like the idea that you came up with this right turn only on Yorkshire. If I remember correctly, that would mean driving by um, the HVAC company on the right-hand side and driving by, I think, Rokas's property, maybe one more. Uh, and that certainly would eliminate a lot of the traffic on Yorkshire. Now, um, a couple things. If we take this project and, and turn it, it's virtually the identical project that was approved at Starbucks. Um, and, and Starbucks parking lot, I don't remember how many parking spaces are there, has to service a bank and Starbucks. It's bordered by residential. It's virtually the same thing. If uh, the traffic on East Main Street, there is a lot of traffic. Okay, but if we if we stop development because there's traffic on East Main Street, we wouldn't have Sky Top Shops, we wouldn't have uh, Chipotle, we wouldn't have Marzano's, we wouldn't have Starbucks, we wouldn't have all these places. Property owners have a right to develop and lease their property so long as it pertains or or conforms rather to planning and zoning. Okay. Um, the fact that the bus company has chosen not to pull in off of East Main Street does not dictate that the town or anyone else is allowed just to take away those entries from the Ross Brothers. Um, we, we've had all our boards and all our 
Uh, mm -hmm. The police force, everyone has chimed in on this property and it conforms, it's local business. There's, there's residential property all up and down East Main Street behind businesses. We, we can't, that's who we are, it's Torrington. And, and I understand Yorkshire is a quiet street. I think you've come up with a good solution. Um, now, I also happen to do some cannabis uh, clients all, across, all around the state. For instance, Fine Fettel is a client of mine. The, the space that she mentioned, they had 80 spots in Newington, is in the middle of a strip center. It has a walk-in center there, and it has a couple other uses. Those numbers are skewed, okay? The, the four or 500 people a day numbers, common sense will tell you, the state of Connecticut just introduced 70-something licenses throughout the state. So the, those, the one or two that are currently open those numbers are gonna come way down because the, the customer base is gonna be spread all around, okay? Torrington already does have a medical use. Um, one, of the, one of the speakers said uh, that these folks were trying to be the first ones on the block. Well, the medical use is gonna turn into a hybrid use, which is both. The state of Connecticut, when they issued the, the decree that cannabis was going to be legal wanted it to be an economic driver. They wanted it to drive traffic to area businesses. I personally think we made a mistake the first time around by putting, by putting the medical use way on the outskirts of town. Okay. Um, a, a karate school and a driving school, no disrespect, is not a school. Right, an adult cannot go to Torrington School. <laughs> an adult can go to a driving school. An adult can go to a karate school. All right, we have to, we have to, we have to look into the intent of of the of the rulings and the regulations that we put forth as a community. Um, so, I I am sympathetic that this is not going to be a bus terminal. It's going to be perhaps a cannabis. If it's not going to be cannabis, it's going to be something else. The bus people are moving away. So uh, it's not going to be a bus terminal. So it, it's going to be something. There will be traffic on Yorkshire Street. And the two or three businesses that are there have enjoyed free reign of entering on Yorkshire Street for years and years and years. Um, I understand there could be concern about parking on Yorkshire Street. Well, that's just like every other street. There's going to have to be enforcement um, and no parking signs. So uh, that's my take on it. And, and I, hope, um, I hope the committee or the commission will understand that the Rosses have every right to lease the property. And, and these guys have every right to come to town. And, and in closing, let me just say another thing. When somebody says you could go anywhere, well, that's nonsense, okay? You can't go in the downtown zone, which covers major arteries coming into Torrington as well as the downtown zone, right? One might think, well, why don't they go to the Staples Plaza, downtown zone? Why don't they go to the Stop and Shop Plaza, downtown zone, okay? Why don't they go up in the North End? Well, then we'll be crowding the guy who's on Winston Road. And I don't think you want two people right next to each other and have one of them fail. Um, why don't they go down South Main Street? Well, I think we know the answer to that, right? We, we have issues down on South Main Street that perhaps this type of business wouldn't be best suited for. That leaves East Main Street. And it only leaves East Main Street from right Aid up because that's where the downtown zone ends. Um, and I don't need to tell you, um, or maybe I do, but I do it every day. There is no other place to go. There is no other place to go. They found a spot that is good. Maybe it's not an A location, but if people come in and tell us they're gonna do 250 to 300 customers a day, I think we have to take their word for it. Um, we, we certainly took Starbucks word for it and they're doing double or triple those numbers in pretty much the same exact scenario, pouring traffic onto residential streets. 
So please take that into consideration when making your decision. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Any questions or comments at this point? Going back to the audience. All right, back to the audience. Would anyone else like to speak in opposition of this application? Please come forward. Uh, John Brustis, 50 Prescott Street, uh, also a renter at 977 East Main Street. Uh, well, I appreciate going after Mr. Longbrooko because he did make some great points. First of all, Starbucks is not open. So I guess we'll see what happens. We'll see what the complaints are from the other residences in those areas as well. Uh, other things about Starbucks and Skytop. Skytop, again, as we go up East Main Street, we stop at a stoplight. We don't do that as you're going down to this property. This is halfway between two stoplights. I can tell you when I'm going down the hill, you're usually, as Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't, can't really see your name because of my eyes. Um, it's about 50 miles an hour. And people go at a very good clip. Uh, so you are not at a stoplight. You are at a stoplight at Skytop as well. When Skytop was put in, we all remember what Skytop used to look like. Now there's a giant retained wall. They restricted the access all the way up to the light. Now you drive in and you drive in from Pine Ridge. Yes, you can access it through whichever street that is, Whitewood, but it is much more difficult and you're certainly not going to attempt it going down East Main Street. You're gonna turn at the light and that's why the entire frontage on Pine Ridge is parking. The, uh, and again, so Starbucks, let's think of it that way. We're going up East Main Street, we stop at a light, then we can go right into Starbucks. If we're coming down East Main Street, we can attempt that left turn. I'll be curious to see how many people attempt that left turn. They're going to go down Tornport West, around the back, and then probably all the way to the light and up East Main and in. I don't know if there's an access from the other street. Again, I've been over there, but I, I'll be honest, I don't know all the access. I know as you go, I think that's Buena Vista, as you go there, I know there is a no, two no entry signs there now. The other point I wanted to make is it, it seems as though the ideas around East Main Street are quite disjointed. Uh, we've been there many, many years. There's been dramatic changes to Skytop in the parking. The O'Reilly's that went in, there's a retaining wall that used to be frontage. But I'm sure everyone kind of thought, well, wouldn't it be nice not to have people pulling off East Main? So they direct them into, into Yorkshire Street and then to O'Reilly's. The Rocus property that used to have access from East Main Street, when that was redeveloped, they eliminated access from East Main Street. Now there's only access from Yorkshire Street. The pattern seems to be that we're trying to limit access from East Main Street. I would assume because we're trying to increase the better or to increase a more safe and secure traffic pattern going down East Main Street. Any left hand turn you make, as we've all experienced, is very difficult to do. I know there's two lanes there. I also know that if somebody stops taking a left hand turn, there's a backup. We've all seen the uh, Dunkin' Donuts across from the mobile station at the bottom of East Main Street. Some days, if you go there very early in the morning, they are back up onto East Main Street. Again, there is enough room to go around, but there is not two lanes down there, but we all manage. Again, is, it, is that great planning? I have no idea, but it doesn't seem to work at times of the day. I can tell you that we generally, we, I, we started working until whatever, later and later, because there's no sense getting on East Main Street going down the hill, because you're just gonna sit. I can tell you of the number of accidents in our own property, uh, cars that have come through our property and into the, their proposed property uh, going on East Main Street. That has happened at least twice to us. I have been rear-ended on East Main Street twice. Again, 
We've all experienced it. We know how fast people go. We know what sand does to it. We know what the trout street light does to it because we see the police officer there virtually three times a week because people are trying to get through that light. One thing, one other uh, just note I wanted to make, and I'm just gonna walk over. And I, I apologize. I don't think I'm, I apologize to those of you on Zoom. This is our tenant's parking. This is a grass lot. Our building sits right here. It would be very easy to walk through here to gain access there. Just to let you know, this is our front parking lot adjacent directly to their, I'm sorry, our front parking lot is right here. There's a grass lot right there. Uh, the other, the only other point I wanted to make is I, I have never thought about it until tonight. There is no no parking signs on Yorkshire Street. I don't know what the parking rules on Yorkshire Street is because nobody parks on Yorkshire Street. But again, if this goes through, I'm sure that's going to change. As Jay had said, as James had said, uh, it is a residential neighborhood. There are many elderly people. There are many people with disabilities on Yorkshire Street. Um, that entire other side or the back side is house after house um, of many people that, again, we've known for many, many years. Uh, and there's a concern of that. Um, so if anyone has any questions, be happy to answer them. But thank you very much. Appreciate you guys coming out today. Would anyone else like to speak in opposition of this application? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Mike Bowe in 19 Tioga Street. And I just wanted to clarify a few things. Um, people are aware that Yorkshire is, in, is an R10 zone, probably the most restrictive zone in the town. Uh, it's residential, there's smaller lots. And Yorkshire is a you know a pedestrian street. There is currently parking on both sides of the street. I usually travel up that street at least two or three times a day. <clears throat> and if there is cars parked on the street and there are two cars trying to go, it's tight. And <clears throat> if you head out of this this site and head to the east to the top of Yorkshire Street on the corner where Jim Rokas is building this app. He has an insurance agent in the front. He leases out two back garage spaces, a little office space, some guys that are basically rebuilding campers uh, for food trucks or food trailers. Uh, they usually park two pickups there. They're usually parked in the street. When you come around the corner, it's tight. When the automobile place went in, if you go up and look at it, if you pull to the stoplight, you stop at the stoplight, somebody coming out of there is hanging clear back into the other incoming lane. And that light, if you stop there, it's a long light. You have to wait. But if you're somebody that's living back down on Tioga or any of the streets off of Tioga, and they're headed uh, east, they will go up to Berkshire instead of going to Tioga to the turn because it's impossible to turn there. And they'll wait for that light. So you usually get cars stacked there. So I think that you really need to, you know, continue this hearing, go out and take a look at those field conditions. I don't think the traffic uh, officer considered those things. I think he was looking at the primary entrance on Yorkshire. <clears throat> I understand all the issues with East Main Street, pulling in and off of East Main Street, making left-hand turn out of there, I think it's gonna be impossible, as, as people have said, because I know that when you leave and go down Tioga Street, when you try to make the left-hand turn on Tioga Street, it's the same situation. The people stack up there, and they pull through the subway parking lot to go <clears throat> south if they're headed south and pull out their other entry on Main Street. So there are traffic issues there.
the studio that everybody is talking about being kind of like an adult program. When they have their programs there, when they have their board programs, those people park on the street because there's so many people. It's a surprisingly successful business. It's been there as long as I've lived in the neighborhood. And he's, if you look at the trophies, he's obviously he does a good job. <clears throat> and if they're using the parking spaces of the Hertz, does Hertz no longer exist? We know that. And if they are using Hertz they, parking I'm spaces, sorry, they do not exist. They do not exist? No. Who's that, Jeremy? No, it's uh, the realtor along the whole process to the realtor. <clears throat> and the curb cut onto Yorkshire, when I, the first map that I saw that showed all the traffic coming in off of East Main Street, exiting onto Yorkshire Street as if it was one way. And there's been revisions made to it. I can see it this evening. And I see that that's a 25, 24 foot cut, curb cut right now, which tells me it's going to be two way. And I can tell you, if you're headed south or headed west, the, the best way to leave that site is to come down the Tioga Street and turn because you're not going to want to go to Yorkshire Street and sit at the traffic light and wait for it to allow you to turn or to be behind somebody who's turning left and having to wait. It's just what the commissioner said here is that people will find the easiest way to get there. And that's what it's going to be, anybody that's headed west. And who's going to be coming to this facility? Primarily people from the west. Because you've got Lishfield, you've got Goshen, you've got all those places that are going to use Torrington, like they always do for everything else, as a service to the county. It'll be just another thing that happens in Torrington. It won't happen in their communities. And one question is clarified if the, the catch basin that they're putting in, are they dumping more water in there now than what was previous? Are they making any, any additional water into that uh, Yorkshire catch basin, Jason? Or it's already, it's already highly impervious, so I doubt it's any different. What's that? I said it's in it's current condition. Is it sloping towards East Main Street? It's my question. I don't, they're not redoing the park. Okay. So I don't think, I mean, it's current state. Because right now what happens is water at the base of the Tioga and the south uh, east corner, mm -hmm. that, that catch basin, when we get rain, shoots water out of the ground about this high. I know I do know Mike Paul had some concerns about water getting uh, using that basin that's already in the road. So they, they 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 he asked to have that second basin installed to keep water out of the you know additional water out of the street. I, I don't know any other details besides that. The other issue that happens is that on the corner of Kyoga and Dorkshire Street. The medical office building is, is they have they have an open curb cut, and what happens there is people come around, they cut across the parking lot in order to make that corner to go up the hill. Mr. Paul, for clarification, there is no light at that intersection, correct? No, that's across from the gas station. That's right. Okay. But people will turn on to Tioga, come and turn and shoot up Yorkshire and drive across the medical parking lot instead of staying on the road because it's fun. So you're saying currently the school, which is the early school, parks on Yorkshire? Yeah, when they have their when they have their ceremonies for their kids, there's no way they can handle the, the number of kids that they have there. They so park how how often do they they do it? It happens probably three or four times a year. It's not a problem. And most of those kids are this big. Yeah. I'm saying they're not. It's not guys. How much, how much space do they consume on that street? They'll park, I would say, basically from the bus station down to the corner.
<clears throat> so I think basically you have a staffing problem in Yorkshire and East Main Street. I don't think there's any way you're going to control people from coming out of that lot and not making a left-hand turn and coming up Yorkshire and turning into that lot from the south or from the north, even if it's signed. If they can't get in off East Main Street, what are they going to do? The next best thing. And who's going to police that? Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. Would anyone else like to speak to the opposition? You can come forward if you have new information. We'll make it brief, please. I just I just wanted to make a couple comments. Name and address oh, I'm sorry, Kimberly Rustis, um, uh, 977 East Main Street, daughter in law of owners Pat and Jim Rustis. Um, there was a comment about Starbucks. Um, I would be happy to do the research and tell you how many walk in customers are visit a Starbucks versus how many are actually driving, the cars keep moving. I would hazard a guess that the, that the parked cars in Starbucks are far fewer than the 400 that they proposed. I also want to tell you, I did speak to the owner um, today of Still River. Um, they see 200 customers a day and he's expecting it to double um, when the new regulations go through. Um, their hours are not seven days a week as well. Um, oh, and the other thing is, is I did do research. This traffic that they're predicting is equal to Chipotle. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition to this application? Anybody else on Zoom out there? Any you know, other commissioners have any questions? I just have to go ahead. There were maybe a couple of comments. Um, I just want to address sometimes things get said and there's not enough facts that support it. And I just want to point out that the comment regarding crime, it's not supportable. It's not supportable at all. In fact, when we were going through the, <clears throat> the uh, sort of review, that the town did pretty extensive to determine whether or not we we're going to entertain retail. We're, we obviously have much more. Um, our chief Baldwin spoke extensively with Massachusetts chiefs and essentially came back with it's just no issue. It's not an issue. So I just wanted to correct that. Okay. <laughs> Secondly, you just made a mention that the guy who has the medical marijuana uh, facility right now said he's going to go from 200 to 400. So he's only adding 200. Basically, 200. Well, I mean, if you, if you say he's going from 200 to 400, that simplistic statement says to me he's got 200 medical customers currently, and he's going to go to 400, which means he's only adding 200 retail customers. If his maximum consumption or his maximum is going to jump by 200, it's just he's adding 200, basically 200 retail. He's doubling his volume. Doubling. I understand what he's doing, but he's retail, medical. he's medical and retail. I'm not back and forth, folks. No, I just, I'm making my point, and, and I'm just wanting to understand that that's, that's how I interpret that statement. I'm not, under, I'm sorry, I, can you say that again? I, I wasn't following your, your argument on that. It's not an argument. Oh, I'm um, okay. calling out the difference in what you said. You said that he has, he stated that he had 200 customers. And then when he opens retail, he expects it to be 400 customers. That's an increase of 200, which means he expects 200 retail customers a day, I guess. That's per day count. Okay. And I believe the applicant was somewhere in that ballpark, 250 maybe. Um, so I just wanted to point out that's. I don't know what to do with that data. It doesn't say much really to me. Um, I think the Starbucks, I think you were hinting on it. I don't believe it's the same at all in terms of what it does. It has a stacking component. There's a drive-through component. Um, how much um, 
in store traffic there is people getting out of cars and parking is an unknown. I mean, we don't know, we don't have one to compare it to in town. So I don't know where that's going, but this this particular component doesn't have a drive through. So it's kind of a wild card. I'm not really sure how we can compare them. I don't think they're the same type of sites. Um, the rest of it, um, I, you know, I think the big component for me and the only thing that matters to me is the residential piece. That's the part that matters to me. The accident level, it's going to exist. The turns on East Main Street, all of the traffic, patterns, all of that's going to exist. What really matters to me is no matter what happens in the property, because the property has a right to be used as a business piece of property, the, the fact of the matter is, is what is the impact on the residential piece that it butts in. So that would be my main concern, and that's all I wanted to say. I'd like to concur with Mr. Perciano too, that if this site was blocked on Yorkshire, I think we'd be having a different conversation to see. You know, the, the in and out on East Main Street is going to be difficult. My personal issue is, and as you presented in your, your presentation, you already have off street parking for your help coming out of the gate. I have a real problem with that because you're acknowledging right up front, we don't have enough parking. We're anticipating we're not gonna have enough parking. You're exiting it out onto a residential street that's already busy. You know, I'll, I'll go to task with the schools, the driving school and the karate school. You know, there's a lot of young individuals hanging around and being dropped off and being supervised and sometimes unsupervised because Mom and dad are late to pick up little Johnny and they're just hanging out. But that's that's where I'm at with it. Any, anyone else? Yeah, my uh, thing is definitely the residential. I don't think it personally works uh, at, at all. Uh, everything going on in Yorkshire, I think uh, it was kind of whitewashed uh, on that whole 24 foot um, apron. Uh, I think that was just a, a, a smoke screen, let's call it. Um, if they really wanted to push it off to the right, they would have gone 12 feet. Um, now let's talk about the school, the karate school. Both of my daughters went there. And let me tell you something. There's little kids, and what they learn there is confidence. And that's a school. I don't care what anybody says, whether it's a ballpark or this, that, or the other thing. That's where they learn how to grow up, and it's a school. And if it's not within, or if it's within the 500 feet, this doesn't even work. It shouldn't even been brought to the application. I think it was an oversight, and that's where I stand on this. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone on Zoom? Mr. Riley, Mr. Harris. Um, the, the, Excuse me if if I if I missed it in the in the presentations, do we have an idea of what the customer uh, volume expectation is in in peak hours? Because obviously if we, we've got a we've got a number per day as what I think has been presented so far, but we know that there are peak hours, um, and and. If you're talking six minutes a customer in peak hour time, how many cars is that? I haven't heard that number unless I missed it. Um, but um, we can bring what, it back to the outcome. Yeah. Well, what is the anticipated peak hours of business, sir? If there is any. So, typical peak hours are, I guess, Friday. Uh, afternoon through the evening and all day Saturday tend to be kind of the peak hours in general. Um, I think in the application we said we expect about a 50% increase. So it takes us from about 250 uh, to about right below 400, which is 40 customers an hour on average. And I think when we did the math for that, um, when we did the math for that, it's one and a half customer uh, uh, sorry, a customer every minute and a half, right? So customer every, you know, less than, less than two minutes, uh, or sorry, 
we're going to have a customer come in uh, no more frequent than two, every two minutes. So it's still not a lot. Uh, are you going to have a rush here and there? Potentially. But even at double that capacity, I think in our, in our presentation, we said even a four times that X. So four X that, we're looking at 16 customers concurrently at our site, which, you know, both from a parking lot and um, from a throughput inside the store, we should easily be able to manage. Um, I do have a bunch of other kind of commentary. I don't know if it's just kind of comment on some of the other things that have been said or come back to that. You can summarize, go ahead. I think. I mean, there, there, were, there were a lot of kind of facts thrown out uh, hard and fast here. And uh, I know obviously a lot of research must have gone into that, but I've done this for eight years. Uh, I ran some of these stores, and some of the things that were said are just not true. Purely was open seven days a week. I'm not sure what, <laughs> what kind of research was done. Uh, Hartford Stanford Plaza in, in, in sort of Hartford Stanford Shirley's locations are in plazas. There's many, many other tenants there. So, uh, you know, saying that there's 70 or 80 parking spots is somewhat irrelevant. Uh, you know, 200 parking spots for a large growth site that employs, uh, you know, 100 plus people in the middle of nowhere is, is <clears throat> as far as the retail site goes, I think is irrelevant. Saying that there, there's no stores in the Northeast that's in a neighborhood. Simply not true. The, the busiest store in New Jersey, Belmont, truly sort of middle of the neighborhood. Uh, I've opened up Oxford, Massachusetts, middle of a neighborhood, both medical and adult use with less parking spots in here. So, you know, some of these things are it's it's interesting. Uh, speaking of facts, Massachusetts, uh, end of Q4, 184 stores, um, average, assuming a hundred dollar ticket, uh, we're, we're looking at less than 300 people a day on average in the stores. So talking about some of these peak stores, fine. There's some stores that are doing more than that, but on average, less than 300. Q1, that was about about 210 customers average per store per day. Q2 this year, now we're below 200 a day. So yeah, saying there's some stores at very strategic, good locations, maybe you know having five, six hundred people, that is happening. But on average, no, not at all. You know, Lester opened up four years ago. Yes, there were huge lines. They're the only store in Massachusetts serving six million people. Of course, there's going to be lines. There's no lines now. So some of these are kind of definitely taken out of context. I think my point of view is we have chosen a site that the town zoned. We met all the requirements, I believe. Yes, should we, could we have made that exit a little bit more narrow? Sure, that was not an oversight. We weren't trying to pull a fast one. We tried to react pretty quick from feedback from the chief. And, we, and the, I already stated I'm more than happy to kind of make it as narrow as permissible, right? To kind of limit it any which way we want. So hopefully that's not going to be kind of a, a restrictive factor. And I know uh, someone on my team, David, reached out uh, to Kimberly. Uh, that was as a courtesy. I know Kimberly reached out to our investors. Um, I think you might have found them on, on the registration site when we registered the LLC. So that was a courtesy. I asked David to reach out and, and introduce himself. So if he did not say his last name, I apologize. But that was purely as a courtesy to just kind of help address any questions. We didn't know what kind of questions you had for us. Um, uh, let's see. Anyway, I think those are the those are kind of the things. So like I said, there's a lot of facts out there. Most of them are not true uh, based on experience. It's easy to kind of pick and choose some stats. So just mentioning that. Thank you. Any other questions, any comments, questions? I just, I mean, I just kind of reiterating, I guess, but my what my main concern is your sure store on parking. That's what I meant with that. Right. Because I do think it's going to be used as parking to go to this system. Do you have anything else? Yes, I just want to touch on some of the traffic related concerns. Um, but also the, the the statement about the the karate school and, and that I did I did the search and unfortunately I did not from schools I considered schools age you know kindergarten first grade public schools recreational facilities I was not considering a karate school as recreational facility and there was no guidance uh, you know in relation to what you would consider. So, however, that regulation was written not to preclude 
but to, to merely inform you that with these in proximity, your decision would be would need to be taken into account these in proximity. It wasn't to exclude the use, it was just to, to allow you to, to look at it in proximity. There's been a lot of discussion on traffic. East Main Street's a heavy street, and unfortunately, pretty much no matter what goes into here, it's gonna either use East Main Street or it's gonna use Yorkshire Street. What we've tried to do is, is balance uh, the, the concerns with the neighbors that the neighbors would obviously have uh, that Yorkshire Street is would be used as as access for uh, commercial use, like the other commercial uses that are using it presently. So, uh, from the point of view of taking a left or a right on Yorkshire, it really doesn't make any sense for somebody to take a left on Yorkshire because if you want to go left on Yorkshire to get back to East Main Street, you might as well just take a right out off to East Main Street at the site. If you're going to take a left out of East Main Street, it makes more sense to go left or right on Yorkshire up to the light to go left on, on East Main Street. So the, the, the orientation of the driveway was done to, to address uh, specifically the, the, the traffic of the police comments, um, but certainly we can reorient it to be tighter if, if that's the desire. Uh, this is from a traffic generating point of view, this is not a heavy traffic generator. Uh, I've been working in, in this business for almost four years and I've done a lot of traffic reports in my, my day and this is not a heavy traffic generator, but there's a lot of traffic on East Main Street and you can't get around that. Um, you know, it, unfortunately it, it is what it is, uh, but from a point of view of, of this being considered a Heavy traffic generator, it certainly isn't at, at the, the expected 250 visitors a day, which the knowledge it certainly indicates is, is what we, we expect if the business is doing good. And it's even been corroborated by the other, other facility in, in town. Um, so we, we really try to balance, balance the needs all around of the neighborhood of the facility, understanding the constraints on East Main Street. And, you know, I don't know if there's, I don't think there's a, a better balance. You could, you could restrict all the traffic to East Main Street, but then you're subjecting people uh, to, that would want to try to take a left coming out of East Main Street instead of being able to go to a light, even though that's going to be a smaller proportion of the people exiting. Most people are going to exit to the right because your major population centers are accessed via Route 8 and through the center of, of town. Um, you know, Litchfield, and, and all we do respect, these are not major, this is not a major population centers in that direction. The major population and access would be via Route 8. So and it should be a right out of the facility. Uh, thank you for your time this evening. I appreciate the opportunity to present before you. And one, more thing. one more question pertaining to just a curiosity. So I'm not familiar with what Massachusetts law is with surrounding cannabis law in New Jersey. Connecticut's allowing an online or a order delivery uh, component where you don't have to go to the store. You can have the store ship the cannabis to your house. Am I correct? That is correct. Okay. Does that happen in New Jersey and also in Massachusetts? The same thing? Uh, New Jersey, it's very limited. I don't think they're doing it for adult use yet. I don't think they've issued those licenses. Very few medical operators did it just because uh, logistically revenue was not quite there. Massachusetts has implemented it with social equity applicants only. They require two drivers, so it's very cost prohibitive. Some, some uh, delivery services trying to do it in a, in a kind of more uh, urban area. Um, but Connecticut will be offering up or is issuing delivery licenses where these right. operators can partner with stores such as this and any other store and come, you know, somebody does place an order, they come pick it up in the morning, they'll kind of pick up, I don't know, 20 orders and they'll go out for, for half the day and they'll come back 
So that should alleviate some of that, you know, traffic. Well, my curiosity is what's your expectation for the use of that uh, sort of opportunity? It's, it's, you know, we think it's, we're hoping to use it to some extent. Uh, it'll be one car coming coming twice, once in the morning and once kind of midday to kind of pick up product. So it'll go, it'll go out twice. But we don't have, an, you don't have, in other words, there hasn't been enough of that going on to have experience that you can speak to. No, because it's, it's honestly, it's, so I oversaw the Northeast uh, and it's really not implemented anywhere in the Northeast right now. I know we did in New York uh, out of two stores, uh, but it was really just for medical. New Jersey, it's just for medical. Uh, like I said, Massachusetts is the only state right now in the Northeast that has adult use delivery, and it's being done quite sparsely because the regulations are, are somewhat prohibited for that. Okay. Thanks. Can I also make a quick confirmation and please. correction on a couple things? Um, Name and address, please. James Grustis, Reading at 977 East Main Street. Um, there was a statement made about the logical way that people are going to go out of Yorkshire is up to the light, you know, take a right and go up to the light. Mike Ball also said that no, people go down and people from Tioga come up. My property, we do not have a pass through. We have a parking lot up front for office staff. We have a parking lot up back for five, five trucks for technicians. If we are heading west, we go down the hill because the light takes forever, just like Mike Bo said. You will be backed up, if, if it's busy, you'll be backed up around the corner. And if there's a lot of cars coming in and out of O'Reilly Auto Parts, you can't get out. If we're heading west, we go down the hill and exit off, off of uh, Tioga down at the bottom. If we're heading east, we go up and on the way for going. Um, so I just wanted to confirm that. And if people are exiting onto Yorkshire Street, they're gonna go whichever way they're, they're headed. They're not gonna go up the hill to that light if they're headed um, west, they're just, they're not going to. And that's just, you know, 36 years of, of traveling on Yorkshire Street. Well, thank you. Mike Bowman, 19 Tioga Street. The other uh, issue on Tioga Street is the fact that Subway, uh, they have their tractor trailer trucks uh, Cisco trucks, you're familiar with them, you see them around. They park their Cisco truck on the street and offload it at least two times a week, which takes that intersection and cuts it down virtually to one way traffic. So if we're picking up additional traffic there, it's going to create a traffic hazard. Uh, so basically, I just don't see, you know, there being any way, and I just know that what people are going to do, they're not going to go up East Main Street and turn it into the site. They're not going to go to the light and turn it into the site because in order to make a left hand turn off of East Main Street, the light is also a nice nightmare. They're going to come in on Tioga and race up Yorkshire. And he says that it's you know not a lot of traffic. Well, figure 200 cars coming down the street and my kitchen window from the street is as close as you guys are sitting. And those lights are gonna come around every one of them. You figure that how many of those guys between, in the winter time between 4.30 and eight are gonna be flashing on our house. <clears throat> it's not a residential neighborhood now. Thank you. May I, may I commissioner? Make it quick. Yeah, I will. Um, Mario Longabuco again. But from what I'm hearing, um, the Karate Studio uses Yorkshire Street. Subway uses Tioga Street. Uh, O'Reilly's dumps out onto Yorkshire Street. C&G dumps out onto Yorkshire Street. Rokas dumps out onto Yorkshire Street. And now we're saying that another business can't dump out onto Yorkshire Street. Um, so that's all I'm going to say. Can I quickly just respond to that? No. Okay, that's fine. Does the applicant have anything else to summarize before we continue with the hearing here? I mean, just one clarification on the traffic. All I said was that people who are going to go west, they're 
or want to go down the hill on East Main Street or take a right out of the site, not take a left out of on the yard here and then go down and then face the same traffic issue of getting on the East Main Street. If they're going to get on the East Main Street to take a right, they're going to do it from the front of the site. Um, if they're going to want to take a left, then the logical thing, as he indicated, would be to go up your chair and to the light and take a left at the light. Uh, so, um, once again, we, we hope you consider our application. We thank you for your time. Thank you. The time is 9.34. I declare this public hearing closed, and we will make a decision at a later time. Moving on to agenda item number 4C, the time is 934 proposed amendments to the City of Torrington Zoning Regulations Act the Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission proposal. Proposed zoning regulation amendments to the residential density caps in the downtown district section 3.1, 4.15, and 6.8. Jeremy, you want to just jump into your mail there? Sorry, I didn't catch the very end of that. Do you, you want me to jump right into the memo? Information. Yeah, I hear a lot of background noise. Sorry. Yeah, serving on the commission this evening is uh, Diane Carroll, Greg Carasino, Jim Babinski, myself, Greg Mealy, uh, Donovan Riley, Starley Arias. Also in attendance is our city planner, Jeremy Leifert, and assistant city planner, Nate Nardi Cyrus. Mr. Garcino, do you have a legal notice, please? City Attorney Planning and Zoning Commission legal notice. The Planning and Zoning Commission has scheduled a public hearing on the following application on Wednesday, November 16, 2022, in the City Hall on Atari Room 218, 140 Main Street, London, Connecticut. <clears throat> Proposed amendment to the City of Torrington Zoning Regulations, Applicant Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission proposal. Proposed zoning regulation amendments remove residential density caps in the downtown district sections 3.1.4.15 and 6.8. Time of hearing immediately following the close of the second public hearing. Copies of the above mentioned proposals are on file at the Land Use Office, City Hall, Port Formation, Department of Connecticut, Greg Mealy, Chairman Planning and Zoning Commission. On the second day of November 2022. Thank you, Commissioner Person. All right. How about now, Jeremy? Yeah, so this this has come up quite a few times over, you know, going back to, to Marty's days. Um, we've been having a lot of conversations with the with the mayor and economic development director about the necessity of having these caps at all in downtown. We want to encourage housing, um, all you know, all the housing we can get really in downtown. While at least keeping our, um, you know, the option there for for uh, for commercial uses um, where they're appropriate, uh, you know, I had some discussions with uh, with the other code officials, fire marshal, building official, and and looked at the the other codes we already have for um, you know what we can build in downtown, and I think our other codes and regulations cover us without the you know the necessity of having. Um, caps at least within the downtown district um so the proposal you know i have this i have the full memo but the proposal basically goes through our regular multifamily regulations our um, affordable housing regulations and our incentive housing regulations and remove the cap basically remove caps any any kind of um residential unit caps um in in the downtown district I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do this. It's just, it's a limited downtown district right. situation. And it, it, that to me, it follows our plan of development in a sense because it's encouraging uh, basically the residential component, which is what we're trying to get right in the downtown area. So the, the way it's proposed, too, it, it still requires all uh, first floor, uh, you know, ground level. Um, space to be commercial um but it does allow us by special exception to wave up to 50 percent in a specific building um you know if it's warranted you know that's what special exceptions are for um so i mean that's really the only other wrinkle 
Okay. Any other commissioners have any comments? What's the, what's the wrinkle right now you're saying jeremy so uh on, on everything on the first floor the, or the ground yeah. level floor has to be commercial but it gives us that that waiver power of up to 50 percent of the ground floor space by special exception okay and it, and it, it it's everything's by special exception if there's new construction but if it's just conversion of existing space in a building that's not on the ground floor it's by site plan mm -hmm. so so you'll see in the chart um you know if people actually have this the the marked up version in the chart there's a p and an e in in those spaces now so it, it depends on what type of uh whether it's a construction or a or a conversion or new construction or a conversion okay. so uh, if i may um uh chairman um uh jeremy so the original caps were Partly, they were they were they were the purpose of the caps originally were were to make sure that there was commercial space sort of reserved downtown or 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 were they um more safety related in terms I, I, of or, or is it some combination of those two things there was probably a worry about i mean i i can't tell you for sure but there was probably a worry about over densifying you know res, residential in downtown but um but you know, the over the years, it's kind of being proven that we need the residential in downtown. And um, you know, in my, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to ask me to read the memo in or not. But if you research towns or, or cities that are, you know, our size or larger, you won't find many, if any, that that have any kind of caps in their downtown areas. Um, most of them, and and you know, especially like the New Havens and Hartfords, the bigger ones, that, uh, you know, have form based zoning, uh, form based codes where they don't worry about setbacks or or unit numbers of units or anything like that. They're, they're they worry about building form. Um, so this is kind of like a hybrid regulation where where we're, we're, we're sort of worried, worried about building form, but not worried about, dent, you know, the standard zoning you know the 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 standards way of zoning either with with the with setbacks and, and densities so, so it certainly gives us much more flexibility yeah yeah and it gives us again it gives us flexibility if the demand is there for more housing we can allow some more units on the on the bottom floor um oh the other the only one other thing i can think of too is i i did say if there is ground floor units they have to have a common entrance so we don't so we don't see a bunch of doors on a you know that go into units on a on a on a street level floor um but yeah i mean it's it it really is to encourage the housing that we need in downtown while still having um still having the 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 guidelines there to to encourage the commercial use too on at street level thank, thank you <laughs> Any other commissioners have any comments? I'll go to the public. Would anyone like to speak in favor of this application? Being none, would anyone like to speak in opposition of this application? Being none, the time is 7.42. Excuse me, wow. The time is 9.42. Put this public hearing closed. We'll make a decision. Again, I'm going to make a motion to approve proposed amendments to the City of Torrington Zoning Regulations. The applicant is Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission. Proposed, proposed zoning regulation amendments remove residential density caps in the downtown district sections 3.1, 4.15, and 6.8. The effective date of the regulation change and amendments shall be the day after publication of the legal notice of decision in the local newspaper. I have a motion, do I have a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you. Times 943, we went out to agenda item number five, public hearings beginning at 7 p.m. December 21st, 2022, City Hall Auditorium, room 218, 140 Main Street, Tarzan, Connecticut. A, proposed amendments to the City of Torrington Zoning Regulations, applicant Torrington Planning and Zoning Commission, proposal proposed zoning regulation amendments and special events revised section 
21.00 and add new section 6.13 special events. Uh, we'll just make a motion that we're going to go. Thank you, Diane. And second. So move second. All those in favor? Aye. So move. moving on to agenda item number six, old business, we have none. Moving on to agenda item number seven, new business A, site plan 1428 applicant, Charlotte Hunt, Hospital, Brian Holler, location 1215 Lynchfield Street, proposal, site plan modification to add 17 parking spaces. Is the applicant in attendance? Yes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tim Kuhn. I'm a professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates. I'm here tonight along with Brian Oler from Charlotte Hungerford Hospital. Um, if I could share my screen or if someone could bring up the site plan, I could go over what we're proposing. Uh, we can, we can, if we unshare, we can just give Tim control of the screen. All right. Go for it. All right. Everybody see that? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the site is 1215 New Litchfield Street, which is a 1.86 acre parcel on the south side of New Litchfield Street, uh, currently occupied by a medical office building that is owned in, by Charlotte Hungerford Hospital. Um, as you can see in the plan, the uh, the, the building is kind of offset in the back. There's a, a curb cut from Litchfield Street that comes down into a 34 space parking lot. There's currently 34 spaces. Last month, we were in front of you and received a, a zone change to local business, um, which allows us to come before you tonight and propose an expansion of the parking lot. What we are proposing is to add an additional 17 parking spaces on the north side of the existing aisle um, between the existing aisle and New Litchfield Street. Um, this will require minor grading. It will require the need to do some transplanting of existing uh, landscape materials and or replacing them. And in addition, we're proposing a couple of uh, new trees to, uh, to bring it up to the current requirements for your, uh, your screening um, in this zone across from the residential uh, neighborhood. Um, even with the increase in the parking lots, we're still well under the impervious coverage requirement. Um, and we also, the, the proposed parking lots do meet the setbacks required in the local business zone. Uh, there will be no changes to the stormwater system. Uh, currently, there's a catch basin that discharges to a, to a stormwater management basin um, that was part of the original development. And we're simply going to utilize that existing catch basin and the existing stormwater system so that we don't require any changes to the drainage system at the site. In addition, we are also proposing a freestanding sign, which will be located near the entrance. Um, the sign will be uh, 40 feet high, uh, or I'm sorry, 40 square feet, 10 feet high. <laughs> Let me correct that, but it'll be non-illuminated. So uh, although this, this current plan does show an electric line coming out to that, that'll be taken off because it's gonna be a non-illuminated sign. It'll just have you know, the reflective lettering so we won't need to cut the parking lot to bring a, that utility across to it. We have received uh, comments from the city staff. We believe we have addressed all those comments. Um, and we've also received a copy of, of Jeremy's memo with the proposed approval conditions and we find no issue with any of those conditions. So uh, if you have any questions, require any more detail, I'd be happy to answer them now. Any questions, any comments, questions? Jeremy, you want to read your memo, please? If you want to, you want me to read it. Thank you. The Charlotte Hungerford Hospital property owner has filed an application for property at 1215 New Litchfield Street, tax assessor map 219. Block 003, lot 008, to modify and grade the site to expand the existing parking lot to add 17 parking spaces. 
The project does not propose any changes to stormwater infrastructure and proposes, proposes to utilize the existing basin in, in the project area. Minor changes to the proposed, minor changes are proposed to landscaping on the site. A new freestanding, that should say sign, along New Litchfield Street is proposed as part of this application. The property is owned by the Charlotte Hungerford Hospital, is 1.86 acres in area, and is located in the LB local business zone. The zone change that reclassified this parcel to, parcel to LB local business was effective November 3rd, 2022. A previous site plan approval under application number 438 was approved in June 2000 for the initial development of the property as an office building and has expired. The current medical office use is a conforming use in the LB zone under zoning regulation section 3.1, table of permitted uses, subsection 5.20. A new site plan approval is required for these proposed site modifications. Plans submitted are titled site plan modification 1215 New Litchfield Street, Torrington, Connecticut, map 2219, block 003, lot 008, zone LB, by J.R. Russo and Associates, LLC, East Windsor, Connecticut, dated August 26, 2022, two sheets. Staff has met previously with the property owner and engineer to discuss the project prior to this meeting. Other items of note, a 40 square foot 40 square foot non-illuminated sign has been proposed as part of the site improvements. The sign will be 10 feet in height and will match the design of other CHH signs in the area. Other staff comments, Nate Nardi Cyrus, assistant city planner in an email to me dated November 1st, 2022, offered the following comment on the comments on the plans. Wetlands, there are no regulated wetlands or watercourses in the vicinity of the subject property that requires wetlands review for this proposal. This constitutes a favorable wetlands report for this application. Landscaping, I request you specify the tree species to be added to the created island and the tree and shrub species to be relocated replaced. I recommend that all proposed tree removals be replaced with red maples or another native alternative. Lighting, no lighting is shown on the site plan. New lighting must comply with section 5.17 of the city zoning code, including the use of full cutoff fixtures. We encourage the use of products approved by the International Dark Sky Association. Signage, signage noted on the map in accordance with section 5.15 of, five of the zoning regulations. The applicant must submit a sign permit application to the city land use office for an approval prior to installation. Conservation, this application was not referred to the Conservation Commission for review and comment. Architectural Review Committee, this project will not require ARC review. Torrington Area Health District, Tom Stansfield, Deputy Director of Health, in an email to me dated October 27, 2022, indicated that he has no comments on the plans. Engineering, Paul Cunzen, City Engineer, in an email to me dated October 27, 2022, offered the following comments. The property owner shall be aware that these parking lot improvements are within the Torrington Water Pollution Control Authority sanitary sewer easement, and as such, improvements are governed by the easement agreement. A, confirm with WPCA that it is acceptable to plant trees over or near the sanitary sewer main, tree in nine foot center island. B, sanitary manhole at start of new curbing west end. One, verify with WPCA that the frame and cover may need to be adjusted in elevation to match the new curb elevation. And two, this work shall be inspected by the WPCA. Police traffic, Police Traffic Sergeant Dustin Baldus in an email to me dated October 27th, 2022, indicated that he has no comments on the plans. Fire, Fire Marshal Edward Bassetta in an email to me dated November 4th, 2022, indicated that he has no comments on the plans. WPCA, Edward Tausi, WPCA Administrator, in an email to me dated November 4th, 2022, offered the following comments. The WPCA crew is checking the condition of the manhole frames and covers and will adjust and or change if needed before this work is started. Trees should be planted at least 20 feet away from the city sewer line. Building, building official Kevin Gillette, in an email to me dated November 4th, 2022, offered the following comments. The proper number of accessible parking spaces must be maintained 
in accordance with IBC section 1106 and table 1106.1. With the overall number of spaces being increased, it may trigger the need for an additional accessible space. Conclusion, I recommend the approval of site plan number 1428, 1215 New Litchfield Street, site plan to add 17 parking spaces and signage with the following conditions and recommendations. One, the applicant shall follow the comments of Nate Nardi Cyrus, assistant planner, outlined in his November 1st, 2022 email to the city planner. Two, the applicant shall follow the comments of Paul Cunzen, city engineer, outlined in his October 27th, 2022 email to the city planner. Three, the applicant shall follow comments of Ed Tausi, WPCA administrator, outlined in his November 4th, 2022 email to the city planner. Changes to proposed landscaping and planting shall be shown on the fi final filed plans. Four, zoning permits are required prior to alteration or use of the site for the proposed use. Five, in accordance with section 8.4.3 and 8.4.6 of the zoning regulations, the following shall be submitted to the city planner. A, two copies of the proposed, uh, of the approved plan, including the engineer's stamp and chairman's signature box on the title page. B, one Mylar copy of the, of the site plan for filing with the city clerk in accordance with section 8.4.3.P of the zoning regulations. Each Mylar sheet shall bear a chairman's signature box, a copy of the approval letter from the commission, an engineer's seal and live ink stamp. C, Mylar sheets shall be filed by the applicant with the city clerk after the signature of the chairman and prior to the approval of zoning permits to begin construction. Any questions, any comments or questions? Does the applicant have anything to summarize? We are all set. We're all set if you are. Thank you, sir. All right. So I'd like to make a motion to approve site plan 1428, applicant travel home for hospital, Brian O. Location 1215 Richmond Street, proposal site plan modification to add 17 parking spaces with the following conditions and recommendations. One. The applicant shall follow comments of Nate Nardi Cyrus, assistant planner, outlining his November 1, 2022 email to city planner. Two, the applicant shall follow comments of Paul Clements, city engineer, outlined in his October 27, 2022 email to the city planner. Three, the applicant shall follow comments of Ed Towsey, WPCA administrator, city engineer, outlined in his November 4th. 2022 email to the city planner. Changes to proposed landscaping and planting shall be shown on the final plans. Zoning permits are uh, number four. Zoning permits are required prior to the alteration or use of the site for the proposed use. Five, in accordance with the sections 8.4.3 and 8.4.6 of the zoning regulations, the following shall be submitted to the city planner. A. Two paper copies of the approved plan, including the engineer's stamp and chairman's signature box on the title page. B, one mylar copy of the site plan for filing with the city clerk in accordance with section 8.4.3.P of the zoning regulations. Each mylar sheet shall bear the chairman's signature box, copy of the approval letter from the commission and engineer's seal and live ink stamp. C, mylar sheet shall be filed by the applicant with the city clerk after the signature of the chairman and prior to the approval of the zoning permits to be the construction. I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so moved. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Moving on to agenda item number 7B, special exception 22-08, site plan 1425, applicant Allen Realty, Inc., location 861 New Harrington Road, proposal, sales of gasoline, new canopy, parking, landscaping, site work, signage. Uh, we need to set a public hearing date. The suggested date is December 21st, 2022. Is so motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Moving on to agenda item number 7C, special exception 22-09, site plan 1430, applicant Layla Campo, location 232 Claude Hill Road. Proposal recreational vehicle RV park for 92 sites and associated amenities. 
section 1.90 mobile home park and recreational vehicle park. We need to set a public hearing date, the suggested date is December 21st, 2022. Okay. Got a motion to second. I second. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, so moved. Moving on to John item number eight, correspondence A, zoning and light violation update. May you have anything to highlight? Uh, I, think, I think we're good. I think so cool. we the, uh, the report, our uh, limited text. All right. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so you got the man right in the room there to ask. <laughs> Moving on to agenda item number 8B, reappointment of architectural review committee members. Um, yeah, we just, uh, we had every single member except our staff, uh, Paul and I, come up this year. Um, we, our, uh, our regulation where, where we established the committee, had, or we're supposed to have these, these members on staggered terms. Um, so I'm, I'm going to read off sort of a list of, of reappointments here to try to get everybody staggered again. Uh, I think we have the ability to do that since we make the appointments and not city council. So, I, um, so I'm just going to rattle these off here. Uh, one member to expire 12, 31, 2023. That'd be Alan Diulio. Um, one, uh, two members to expire, uh, 12, 31, 2024. That's Paul Cousins, Jeremy Leifert and Two members to expire 12 31 2025. That would be Mark Travella and Robert Maletti. And then one alternate member to expire 12 31 2025, John Sullivan. Uh, what that leaves us also with is one vacancy. Um, Jim, Jim Babinski did not re up. So we need a new. Um, member from the Planning and Zoning Commission to fill the other alternate vacancy um, as, our, as our Planning and Zoning member on, on Architecture Review. When, when do they meet? How many times? Well, as, as needed, and they're always Thursday at five o'clock. So it's just when applications come up when we need a review. We just went like five months without a meeting, but then had meetings tw two months in a row. Sure, I'll volunteer. <laughs> all right, that's a that's an alternate vacancy. So, yeah. all right, and that one expires 12 31 2024. Oh, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. So, all those I just rattled off, I have them all written down, but <laughs> so that's. That's the architectural review. Uh, moving on to that agenda, item number eight. Oh, sorry, sorry, Greg. We got to take a motion for all that I'll stuff. I'll move, <laughs> you know, I'll move your list and dates. Okay. <laughs> I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. Moving on to the agenda, item number eight C reappointment of planning and zoning commission members. Uh, that I just wanted to discuss the people that are up this year. One of them is Greg. Greg Neely up, is up this year. I'm just going to retire. <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't going to let him go, right? No, nope, no. Nope. All right. Um, and the other one's Tom Tellman, but I'll, I'll contact him, um, I guess, by email or something since he, he didn't make it tonight. Oh, well, just vote him in and <laughs> don't tell him he's in by, don't, by tip vote, him by vote. Don't, yeah, don't don't tip him off <laughs> no you don't need, don't need a motion i just wanted to have it up for discussion to make sure well you know people were still you know wanted to stay on <laughs> whether they wanted it to or not right yeah <laughs> all right we're good yep all right, moving on to agenda item number eight D, discussion warranted with affordable housing plan for 2022 to 2027. Uh, do you have a few comments on this, Jeremy? Yeah, I went, so I went back to, to kind of see what we needed to act on first, sort of on our on our list of, of uh, action items that PNZ was responsible for. Um, and I think a good first one uh, that was recommended is to update our plan of conservation and development. To, uh, to refer back to that plan that's that'll require us to to open a public you know open open the plan back up 
for a, for a public hearing just to add the references to the uh, to the affordable housing plan. Um, obviously, our December is filling up a little bit, so we I guess we could probably just uh, just play it by ear and see if see if January is not going to be too busy of a meeting. Uh, January or February, um, we can we can add that on for a public hearing. We don't, we don't have to take a motion on that yet, just to... Jeremy, it wouldn't be that big a deal, right? I mean, what we're talking about doing is not going to take a lot of time. No, it shouldn't take... It's We just have to open it for, for a hearing. we got to post it and... Why don't we go ahead and just make it, you know, what, January? January, let's make it January. Yeah, for January. Oh, you want to you make a motion now to do it for January? I want to just get it out of the way. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine, too. I, I do need... Yeah, actually, that works fine, because I... I'll have to look, but I'm pretty sure we need to do notices to the the 35-day uh, notice to the Council of Governments on this. So yeah. January would, would be it anyway. Pardon? If we were going to make a motion today, January would be the earliest we could do it anyway, the January meeting. January. I we, we don't know what date that is yet, though, so, but we could just right, so we'll, see. We'll, we'll leave it for our next meeting. And December 21st, we'll, we'll, point, we'll, we'll provide a... Uh, at that point, at that point. We'll have our calendar ready oh, by the by the time we our next meeting rolls around too, so we'll know when our 2023 meetings are. Okay. All right. Okay. Moving on then, agenda item number nine, adjournment. The time is 10:05. Uh, so, all right. I'm second. I am being motion. Bye. Thanks, all everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you for your right. attention this evening. It's a long one. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Thank you.